Hey everyone, so um, tonight is, uh, for tonight's Max's Man Cave, we are going to be talking about um, the passing of Ed Piscor. Um, and unfortunately, I wish that um, this could be kind of a celebration of life because the the guy was extremely talented and an incredible artist. Um, and was extremely passionate about his craft and put his entire livelihood, his entire life, his entire identity was comics. Um, and that's something that I think everyone can honor about him. But tonight will be a little bit different in that we won't really be going over his books. Um, even though I've got a copy of his, you know, X-Men Grand Design behind me, um, I have all his Red Room issues in my short boxes. Um, I really appreciated the art that Ed did and uh, what he brought to this comic book industry. And it'll be weird that I don't wake up and watch a cartoonist kayfabe video where they go over a Wizard magazine or some indie book or an image Mark Silvestri comic. Um, but thankfully, we have those memories of him forever on his YouTube channel. Um, him and Jim Rugg have created an entire legacy of books that we will be able to remember their conversations by. And they also have their creations that we will be able to look at and remember them by. But tonight, it's going to be a little bit more serious because essentially with the allegations that arose, and with the conversation of cancel culture, cancel mob, um, suicide, uh, grooming, pedophilia, these were these are all things that I think need to be discussed, um, especially because my YouTube channel was started as a comic book channel that t spoke about the culture as well. And seeing as though at this point in time, many people have left the comic book industry because of what has been going on. And now after this death, um, after this blatant murder of Ed Piscor, um, I think it's left a lot of us asking, what are we even doing here? You know, what is the, what is the comic book industry with when, when things like this have happened, when now there's a, a murder, uh, that we've witnessed. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I think cancel culture is not just within the comic book industry. I think it's everywhere. Um, it has become part of our culture. Hence, cancel culture, right? Uh, it's disgusting. It's deplorable. It uh, accomplishes nothing. Um, and it is only meant for, at least from what I can tell and what, from what we've seen from a lot of these individuals who partake in cancel culture, it is only for individuals to either get even or um, have some sort of a power dynamic uh, to ensure that they are the ones instilling their rule and their reign, silencing others and canceling them and othering them, ostracizing them from the community until something like this happens. Uh, as you have already noticed, it's just me tonight. Um, I may invite the boys in later uh, after the first hour or so of the stream um, because ultimately uh, the guys and I, I think a lot of other YouTube channels have spoken about this ad nauseum, right? But tonight during the second hour of the show, we're going to be pulling up. I have, I mean, 30 tabs open right now. I'll, I'll show you guys. We're going to be pulling up um, all of the tweets all of the articles, all of the videos, everything, everything. We will be showing it all tonight. Um, and we will be talking about the murderers of, of Ed Piscor. Um, also, I wanted to mention, I didn't speak about this earlier. You guys probably have seen my tweet. Uh, I also put this on my community post on the channel. Uh, I didn't want to speak about this until the funeral had happened and until the, the family had, you know, some time to grieve. Um, because though we have lost an incredible artist, they have lost a son. They have lost a brother, 
right? Uh, so I, I wanted to wait until the funeral had happened. And I also wanted to wait until I effectively had collected a little bit of my thoughts. Cause if I were to have just gone live Monday night, it would have just been me swearing a lot. Right. And it would have been extremely emotional. And I want to come at this from a place of not necessarily objectivity, but a place where I feel like I have thought about this. I've sat with this a little bit, um, waited a week until we really expose a lot of who these people are and what they are here to do. Um, because cancel culture is not just othering someone or ostracizing someone. This is what they want to do. The people who are involved in these mobs, um, they have claimed a scalp this past week. Um, and that is what they're here to do. Right. Um, so I, I know that seems dramatic and I know people will go, Oh, Max, you're just, but, I genuinely think that that is what the goal is of cancel culture. It is to completely subject an individual who they deem as, as wrong, as in the wrong, uh, to completely other them and ostracize them until they have ended their life. And they got what they wanted, uh, unfortunately this week. Um, so with that being said, um, the guys will not be joining me until potentially later on in the stream when we actually begin to open up some of those tabs and show the tweets, show the reactions, show the responses of some of these individuals who are responsible for Ed's, Ed's murder, right? Uh, because like I said in my tweet earlier today, we will be showing everything. Um, we're not going to be holding back um, and we're, we're going to be giving you guys as much information as possible just so that people can see what happened here. Right. I, I, I hope that we can document all of this so that it never, ever, ever happens again. Uh, I also wanted to mention that tonight's stream is not going to be monetized. Um, so please uh, respectfully, I ask that uh, we don't do any super chats tonight. Um, I love you guys in chat for everyone who is here. Thank you guys, everyone who's lurking, everyone who's who's hanging out tonight. Um, I ask that we don't do any super chats. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm not monetizing the stream, but in the description below, you will be able to uh, see Ed's um, last words. So I, I linked the document that we'll be reading tonight, which are Ed's last words. Uh, to us, to his family, to the fans, to everyone. So, yeah. Uh, once again, I want to just say that this, um, you know, it's it's a somber, somber week. It's a somber tone. And so I do apologize, but I think that this is something that needs to happen and something that needs to be talked about. Um, and at the same time, who hasn't spoken about this issue? You know, I feel like everyone has tried to weigh in. Everyone has given their opinion on this, but uh, tonight, what I hope to do is fully give a in-depth, I mean, like from start to finish uh, type of recap of this entire week, uh, because it's been a week that I would not wish on anyone to have to endure um, for, for Ed, for Ed's family, um, and for all those who have been affected. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to articulate everything that I want to in this stream. Uh, I hope that I can. Uh, I prayed before this that I would be able to speak um, intellectually and that I would be able to discern what it is that I actually need to speak about and uh, what we need to talk about. Um, and if you guys know me, I'm a classic overthinker. So I overthink things and I go, what if I miss talking about this? Or what if I've missed this? Or what if I didn't mention that? Or, oh, shoot, I, I should have brought this point up, right? Um, so if there is anything that I do miss, um, please forgive me. And I, I hope that um, it's not for lack of me thinking about it and, and talking about it. It is just a lack of me potentially either forgetting or maybe uh, not having it in my notes or uh, maybe not being prepared enough. But uh, I hope that, like I said, I can articulate everything I, I want. So, um, and I think before also, I know I have to kind of preface a lot of this stuff because it's been a week, right? It's been a lot of a week of just all these thoughts kind of going through my head. Uh, regardless of whether, and this was, I think, one of the things that was happening online was regardless of whether or not we believe that Ed is guilty or not, 
a man has lost his life. A, uh, a family, you know, parents lost their son. Uh, siblings lost their um, their their brother. Uh, this was a human life that was taken from us, obviously too soon, um, because of something that we could have avoided, right? Um, and so that that's what's tough is that he didn't need to go like this. And um, I think we flippantly consider cancel culture to just be, ah, yeah, it's those weirdos again. They're, they're talking about this thing again. They're trying to cancel this guy again. Whatever, man, just ignore them. But they claimed a life. Like these individuals claimed a life this week. And we flippantly just thought, eh, it's just another cancel culture mob, you know, right? right? We did videos about it. We talked about it on YouTube. We did, you know, we saw articles about it. Um, and even me, I, I, I reflect back on my live streams that I did. And I ask myself, could I have done something more, right? Uh, was there something that I did say or didn't say about the situation? I know initially when I heard about this, I, my first thought, my first thought was, I can't believe this woman. There's no way I can believe her unless I hear about what Ed has said. Right. Um, and we, and, uh, and we didn't actually get Ed's word until it was too late. And that's what's so sad. So uh, hopefully I can articulate all this, like I said, and then uh, hopefully we can come to a, co a consensus that regardless of whether people or not believe that Ed is guilty or not, um, I think we have to recognize that the court of public opinion before he was even deemed guilty or not already deemed him guilty, which henceforth killed him. Uh, and I think that is what's scary about this. Uh, because I remember doing Wes's stream, I remember doing my stream, I remember going on Josh's stream, and there were a lot of moments where we were like, oh man, this, this seems like he's guilty or, oh man, I, I don't know. I don't really know. It's, he doesn't seem guilty. Maybe just creepy. Right. Or I don't know if we should be so quick to judge, or I don't know if we should. And, and we had these conversations back and forth of what is it, what does this actually mean? Um, and I don't think that that's the conversation we need to have anymore. Um, Ed clearly stated in his letter, in his note, in his last words, what his intentions were. Um, and I, I want to fully believe that. And, uh, so, and we're going to go over that in just a second here. So, but yeah, uh, this is a human life. And so regardless of whether he was right or wrong, regardless of whether he was guilty or not, I think the most important thing that we can look at here is that this is a, this is a significant moment in history, um, in the comic book industry, but also just in culture in general. So, but, uh, before we get into that, uh, I do want to say thank you all for being here. Cajun says sad situation. I mentioned on Josh stream. I know the feeling he was going through, wish people would listen before making a judgment. Absolutely, man. Um, and I, I apologize that you have also been in that scenario where you felt like you couldn't escape, right. Or you couldn't get out of that, that scenario where you felt like this was it, where you, when you're in those situations, you feel like you won't be able to escape that. And that is what cancel culture is meant to do. It's meant to put you in a scenario or a situation where you are so depressed and so alone and so ostracized that you feel like there is no way back to redemption. That is what cancel culture, cancel culture is meant to do. So I'm sorry to hear that Cajun. Uh, Jack Frost says your boy, Zach has been pointing fingers with his last few videos. Absolutely. Uh, he has been posting pictures and videos and screenshots, and we will actually be going over some of those, Jack. Uh, we, we will be looking at some of that tonight. Uh, hello, Raphael. Thank you for being here. Josh, my brother. Thank you for being here. Salty, my man. Thank you for being here as well. Cheers to you, sir. Um, and for evil to flourish, it only requires what good men to do nothing. Absolutely. Thank you, Salty. This is why we have our, uh, our channels because we have to talk about this stuff. Hello, Al. Thank you for being here as well. Great to see you. Jay, uh, hey, Max and chat. This felt like an important one, so I wanted to be here for it. Thank you so much, Jay. I hope that you are doing well, and I hope that your health is uh, is good. Um, we have Bork Bork. Thank you for being here. Uh, Mark McGrath, I don't really know how to feel about this. Still angry. I'm not questioning anyone's right to talk about this, but pong over someone's life like this, trying to prove a point, feels creepy. Um, 
I, I too am angry, Mark, and I, I completely understand that people uh, talking about this feels maybe dirty or um, gross or, you know, uh, inappropriate. Uh, but I think that's why I've made the stream not monetizable. Uh, I've turned off my monetization for this stream and have asked, you know, everyone to respectfully not super chat just because like you said, it, it does feel odd to paw at this, this situation that has led to a death. Um, and so I don't want to dr uh, dramatize this, but I also think that it's important that we discuss who these people are and what they did so that we can recognize this in the future as to what this looks like and how this cancel culture nonsense needs to stop. Right. So, um, uh, yes, thank you, Salty. I should probably have like a running tally, just, you know, running banner, just saying, um, that we won't do any super chats. Um, but yeah, so before, uh, before we, be, you know, start showing some of these tweets. Um, as most of you know, uh, this, these were the last words of Ed. I'm going to read through these really quickly. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the allegations as well. These are the words of Ed Pisker, uh, his last words, actually, I'm so sorry for being stupid. And that's really telling of the first words that, um, uh, th that he would put in this letter, right? Uh, Lisa says, I don't know the story, so I'm here to learn. Um, Lisa, um, just a just a quick overview. Uh, last week, uh, sometime last week, uh, right before Easter, I believe it was, um, allegations began to circle around Ed Piscor uh, from a woman uh, named Molly. Uh, Molly is now 21. Her Instagram is Sid Goblin, uh, which she's currently, it is now deleted, so you can't find it. Uh, but please do not go contact these individuals. Sid Goblin posted these pictures on her Instagram, which claimed that Ed Piscor was grooming her um, and that he was being uh, perverted. And she felt that he was a creep uh, because he was 40 and she was 17 at the time of their, uh, of their conversation. Um, I will read these as well, but I think it's important that we uh, read Ed's words. Um, to get to kind of get context, but um, Mol, this was there are actually two Mollies involved with this, M young Molly and older Molly. Young Molly, which is the seventeen-year-old who posted these, was the individual who began the entire incident. Her words were what started this whole thing. Uh, older Molly was the second individual who decided to pot pile on, and that was when we heard of this, and she began to claim that. Ed Piscor had asked her for sexual favors, including blowjobs, oral sex, uh, in order for him to introduce her to his agent. So she piled on to this in which Ed also has words to say about the older Molly um, in his last words, in his last will and testament. So um, yeah, Josh, I completely understand this. I still can't read Ed's letter without tearing up, mainly the end when he starts sharing all the preparations he's made to prepare for taking his life. Um, and I think this, so this letter was released on April 1st. And I know a lot of people who knew Ed thought that this was actually an April fool's joke. Um, and I, and I don't want to make light of that. Uh, I never thought that for a second, but I do want to mention that that was actually a conversation for some people. Um, and that, that is how sometimes inconsequential the internet can be. Um, it's scary, you know, that April fools, Hey, you know, it's just a letter. Right. But this was, uh, this was something that was actually very serious and had, um, you know, ramifications for it. So, but yeah, Josh, I completely understand. Um, we may not read all of his information just because it may not be pertinent. Um, and it, I know how personal it is. So, uh, but yeah, his first, his first, um, after those allegations essentially had surfaced, there was about a week, uh, a, a couple days uh, before we actually heard anything. Uh, the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel was taken down and Jim Rugg had issued a statement on his Instagram saying that he is not working professionally with Ed Piscor anymore. Uh, so he had denounced his per professional relationship with Ed. Uh, and at this point in time, we still had heard nothing from Ed. And during that whole period of time, the news actually did a report and they actually went to Ed's parents' house Yes, this is their actual house 
with their address clearly stated on the front, which this is off topic, but I truly hope that whoever did this news report in Pittsburgh gets held accountable for the, the, the heinous reporting. They treated Ed like a murderer before he even began to speak out about what was being said about him. Even with the allegations that were, to- that were uh, spoken towards him, they began to treat him like an enemy of the state, like a criminal, like a murderer. If you watch this whole news report, which is still up on YouTube, it looks like they're doing a, a report on on like uh, who's who's a you know some sort of serial killer, um, and it just seems so distasteful. And yet here they are showing Ed's face, all the text messages, uh, Ed's lawyer or like a lawyer within uh, Pennsylvania or Pittsburgh. Um, they had, uh, Ed's father on here with the, uh, address shown on the house, just to, like really despicable, distasteful stuff before Ed had even spoken about this. And this is why we talk about the court of public opinion and how dangerous cancel culture is. Um, Mark says one thing is clear from Ed's final words is that he loved his family very much and cared deeply for their welfare. It comes up multiple times. Amen, Mark. Thank you for mentioning that. And that is absolutely something that we can see. Um, David, uh, David gear. Thank you for being here. says women are complaining that men aren't taking, talking to them or asking them out. This is why, um, David, I think that that actually has even larger ramifications and implications. And we will get to that a little bit later when we read, uh, the excerpts from both Molly's. Um, the moment I read the bits discussing his income, his house, where things are located, I knew it wasn't an April fool's joke. Absolutely, Josh. When he began to discuss how detailed and intricate everything was, it was that was that was the moment. Omega Man says, "You boy Zach's videos on this topic are very good. The language he uses is what we all need to say that he was murdered. It went from cancel pigs to cancel murderers." I agree, Omega Man. I think our language and our words mean things, and I be I think we need to begin to um, to speak uh, with that same language. Um, to effectively call this, call this out. So Ed's uh, first statement, his first uh, sentence here, I'm so sorry for being stupid. I definitely should never have talked with Molly D, who is the initial Molly, the young Molly, who posted these, um, these initial uh, pictures, which was Sid Goblin. So that is Molly D that he's talking about. The language and optics look real dumb at best, but I promise my innocence, especially out of context, it looks terrible which is what a lot of us wanted. We wanted the context of what was happening with Ed. We wanted to him to explain because a lot of us knew that, hey, Ed, we believe you, man. We we want you to prove your, your innocence here. And we're only hearing Molly talk about this. You can come back from this. You can be redeemed. We want, we are rooting for you to survive. Um, and that is what is so sad uh, because even with him, saying, I, I I just feel stupid about this, right? It was the height of COVID with no end in sight and I was alone through most of it. I was just happy to have the internet to talk to people with common interests. The way that I noticed her was when she would like a bunch of my pictures at once. I want to note this. Please remember this. This sentence here. The way that I noticed her was when she would like a bunch of my pictures at once. Because when we go to Molly's statements... Molly said that Ed was the one who reached out to her. And this is why it's he said, he, he said, she said, bullshit. Why so much of cancel culture is you cannot trust anything until we hear both sides of this. You cannot be so quick to judge. You cannot condemn someone. Because if, if I were, if Ed were to have said this and he came out with this right off the bat, I'm sure most people would have said that Molly was the one who love bombed Ed by, by love bombing all of his photos and all of his pictures. And so that is what Ed notes here is that she was the one who began to contact him. I wasn't trolling Instagram randomly, but I definitely shouldn't have chatted with her when I found out how young she was. And this is something that I think a lot of guys have been saying is that once he found out she was 17, cut communication. 
And I think that there are times where we, we may have to do that just for the sake of being respectful to her or being respectful to someone who is younger. But that is one point of contention is if, you know, I have an intern on a film set or something. I know Robert Meyer Burnett talked about this and they're 17 or 18. Do I, do I talk to them? What is the right way to talk to them? Uh, I know in the Marine Corps, we had young women who were in our platoon that were 17 or 18 years old. And guess what? Every time I spoke to them, I would have another male or another female in the room with me to make sure that everything was on the up and up because you can never be too careful with this kind of stuff. Um, and so I wasn't trolling Instagram randomly, but definitely shouldn't have chatted with her when I found out how young she was and recognizes this. And I think everyone saw that 17, even in the state of, uh, Pennsylvania or e even in Philadelphia, wherever they were, the consenting age is 17. It, it, I think for a lot of people, it doesn't look good. Right. Um, I'm mad that comic journalists are protecting, Ramon, Alex, and the other cancel pigs. George, unfortunately, yes, um, none of the, well, they're part of that whisper network. They can't rat out their own people. Uh, professionally, I used to think I'd be safe in a work meeting with a female subordinate. And if another female subordinate was there, pro tip men, never put yourself in that position. Absolutely salty. Josh says, of course they are, George. They're all part of that same net whisper network. Yep. Uh, if he cut off contact because of her age, gender, she'd accuse him of sexism. And, and you know what better that she accused him of that than grooming and pedophilia, you know? Um, and it sucks, right? Cause, cause now we're in a situation where men are going to be accused of either one sexism or, or ageism or whatever, uh, misogyny or grooming and pedophilia, either one, you, you know, you obviously one is much, 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 much worse than the other, um, holding her back from getting into the industry. So yeah, I see where you're coming from though. Omega completely agree. Salty was actually accused of, Oh wow. Yeah. That's uh that's, that can get really scary. Uh, the boss had to step in and confirm that I'm glad he probably had sent the first DM. Is that right? Uh, I am not sure. And I can't confirm whether or not he did send the first DM. Uh, but it looks like there was a mutual connection between the two of them, but that she had love bombed him as she, uh, liked all of his photos and whatnot. Um, based comics says the whisper network was a Facebook group. They moved to a discord a few years ago. I didn't sign up for it, but I assume they do the same kind of thing there. They used to on Facebook. I know they tend to do that on forums as well. Ed goes on and says, seeing uh, seeing someone younger representing our, our crumb and Gigi Allen gave me hope for the next generations and made me curious. Curiosity killed the cartoonist. So in fact, he may have reached out after she had, uh, you know, liked a lot of his photos. There's no way I'd have a 17 year old stay at my place. Maybe not, e not 18. Even I was forward projecting to some unknown future where COVID lockdowns were finished and we could see people again. And it wasn't even with sex in mind, but simply saying that there's a bed here to crash. Let like the kindness that was given to me a bunch of times when I was starting out. Zine fair in town, come crash. Ask Le Liana Fink for anyone else who's come to visit. It doesn't mean sex. When I asked if she could keep a secret, it was because I was sharing some Red Room pages before announcing the book and was just trying to sound cool. Tone is missing. And this is another thing where so quickly do we say, this is what she Molly meant to say, right? But tone is missing with a lot of this in context, nuance. These are all things that cancel culture doesn't keep into play or put into play. When I said naughty girl, it was, sar it was sarcastic after she told me some crime or infraction she committed. The whole pile of my DMs she collected to show is just awful to look at. I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to offer professional favors to anyone or use my position, what a joke, to get into anyone's pants. We're all in the same art game, so why not introduce new friends to old friends? When I was bringing up any professional stuff to anybody, it was just common ground conversation. Then seeing these DMs even further out of context on other news outlets and media sites, Matt P and the... Uh, PGH city paper. Uh, you know what you did to skew your narrative. Fuck you. But they sure surely gave themselves their own plausible deniability by asking me for comments, right? As I'm trying not to jump off a bridge or something. And I believe that is in response to what they did here with the news outlet. 
Molly Wright is a conundrum to me and her actions border criminal. Now we get into Molly Wright, who is the individual who posted this, her Twitter, uh, Wally Might. So this is the allegations that the older Molly had, had talked about, where Ed had um, solicited sexual favors in order for her to be introduced to his agent. But then Molly Wright later said that they continued a professional relationship after that. So we all said in our minds, is it really, is she just try, trying to hop on the bandwagon at this point? Is she trying to ruin his career? Is she trying to cancel him for no other reason other than to be a professional victim? And I think that this is what really, what 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 Ed is screaming here with it with his you know out with his lungs. Both of these Mollies need to be held accountable for the words that they said to kill Ed Piscor, uh, because not only were the people that were involved with the cancel culture in the comic book industry, um, you know, part of this, but I truly think that both Mollies should be held accountable for this. Um, now, both Mollies have, I think, protected and deleted their Instagrams and their tweets and all of that. Um, and I would never tell you guys to go reach out to them or com contact them or anything of that so sort. But I do think that we need to discuss the actions of both of these Mollies and how it killed this man. Um, because as Ed says, Molly Wright is a conundrum to me and her actions border criminal. He said, she said, never looks good, but none of what she said happened. And I can't believe she'd be so malicious and pile on like this. Well, look what happened with me too. And, and this is what we're seeing. Now, women who actually have allegations or, or who are trying to pose allegations towards someone or women who actually have been hurt or wronged or, or groomed or, or, you know, um, raped or whatever it may be, those women who do need to be heard and do need their voices out there. Now, these Mollies have ruined that because of allegations like this that are complete lies and fabrications, all for clout, all for professional victimhood. Uh, I think Robert Meyer Burnett had spoken about this on his, on his show, on his podcast, where so many people now in this generation of this age are trying to become victims because it makes them feel like they have a purpose. And even when they're not victims, they can get, get on the bandwagon to say, I'm part of this cause or I'm part of this cancellation and I'm doing my part. And now I can become a victim because I'm standing up against the man or I'm standing up against this thing. So I can now be called a victim because I'm now part of something. And that mentality is extremely dangerous. And another reason why Ed Piscor is not with us anymore. Now that I'm officially checked out, I think my family has a civil lawsuit and she could be held accountable. Abs absolutely she should be held accountable. She pushed this over the edge into multiple women territory. This, oh man, I'm getting so angry. I apologize. It's so corny. I absolutely never asked for a blow job and trade of anything ever. She successfully made me look stupid and everybody accepted her word as fact. Let me read that again. Made me look stupid and everybody accepted her word as fact. Citizens of the internet are playing such dangerous games with people's lives. I never had anyone lined up for an open relationship with her. I never was interested in a relationship with her. We had sex twice and she initiated both times. The first was a surprise when we were uh, done watching a movie or just hanging out. I don't remember the circumstances Four years ago. She jumped on me and we started kissing telling me how comfy I made her feel. We quit hanging out during COVID lockdown, but kept in touch here and there, and I thought things ended naturally. Thankfully, her post, uh, thankfully her post, including the piece about me dissing Jim Rugg, super emotional, fuck Ed Piscor type language, and the Red Room sales stuff portray she's a petty woman scorned. We will continue to see this with these Mollies. Punitive and false. Not only was Molly, the older Molly petty, a petty woman scorn, but this younger Molly, when we read her allegations, what was her, what was her intent? What did she want to do? What was she trying to do? And why now, now that she's 21, why now? 
it it coincided with the fact that Ed Piscor had a a beautiful art exhibit that was going to be presented, a professional art exhibit that was going to be designated to Ed. Why why would she have put out these allegations now? Here's one of and and here's here it is. Petty woman, a petty woman scorned. My house was burning and she threw gasoline on it. There needs to be recourse for my loved ones. I'm dead. I don't have a reason to lie. Hold Molly Wright accountable, please. I don't have a reason to lie. Hold Molly Wright accountable, please. And you know what's you know what's sad? Is that most people online have been talking, yes, they've been talking about that idiot Villa Lobos or the psycho psychopath narcissist Alex DeCampi and all of these other, you know, the, the classic whisper network. Has anyone talked about Molly Wright and how her actions also led to his murder? I, I, I truly, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't heard anyone talk about both Molly's, honestly, and how deplorable, despicable, and shameful um, they should. They, th- this is hold Molly Wright accountable, please. Uh, reputation destruction is from her form of aggression, and there were very real consequences. My lawyer is Harris Miller. It is is it possible to sub uh, subpoena all texts and DMs I had with her? Uh, Big Titty Taff, yeah, I would draw you naked all day and never apologize for wanting to. I like drawing tits and tattoos when I'm not drawing comics. I'm a solitary guy and I've put every ounce of my time and life into my work for around the past 20 years. Now for Big Titty Taff, if you want me to elaborate or discuss that anymore, I really think that that is as innocent as it sounds and it is just as simple as it sounds. I'd like to draw... I'd like to draw her, right? There, there are photographers who like to take nude, uh, nudes of, of uh, women and men. They, fe- they feel like the, the female form or the male form is beautiful. They feel like it's an art form. For Ed, sure. Maybe he thought that uh, this woman, whoever she was, he loved drawing her. And I think it's as simple as that. I don't think that's any type of weird, perverted behavior or some sort of sex pest or some sort of pedophile this is a woman who sounds like a consenting woman who he loved to draw because he appreciated her form. I'm a solitary guy and I put every ounce of my time and life into my work for around the past 20 years. This is his identity. This is all he is. I never felt satisfied with my skill, so I constantly work really hard and tied it all to my identity and self-worth. And you can tell, you can see that that really is his passion. Every waking moment was spent working and ideally I thought it would be best to have all friends who share the same passion. It's why I offered to introduce them to my friends. It's like my cherished Japan trips, introducing Koenji Sean to Brian Moss and Moss to Scheme and Scheme to Danica. Uh, I was the only person who knew everybody on the trip and by the end of it, we were all good friends. Social media has now was how I met people. My greatest relationship began at the end of COVID thanks to meeting on Instagram. If you guys know, if you guys don't know, most of my panelists, most of the individuals who I have on this channel, I never met in real life until a year ago or yeah, maybe two years ago. I think the, the individuals who I constantly call friends, who the, the individuals who I speak with daily, I don't get to see them in real life. We met through YouTube. And, and that is something that um, I think is beautiful. And I think Ed took advantage of that, which is why his relationship or internet relationship with Molly was, was so, um, uh, was such and, and happened to be during the time of, of COVID. Um, and, uh, chat, I apologize if I'm not seeing you guys, uh, but I will get to you guys in just a second. Um, a rocky but amazing three-year relationship with someone who taught me to true love. That said, I'm so glad we broke things off when we did so that she didn't doesn't get any slack. She's way better off. Hope you're well, Clam. I never stopped loving you. This is all this all happened before I knew you. I don't know who Clam is, but um 
It sounds like Ed truly loved her as well. Now it's all gone. Art Show evaporated, was about to sign a 75K, 75K deal with Switchblade Shorties with Abrams. Cartoonist Kayfabe ends with Jimmy's shocking revelation statement. Those words hurt. And uh, for those of you who don't know, that was Jim Rugg denouncing Ed Piscor and um, ending their professional relationship, which he announced on Instagram. Uh, since then, Jim Rugg has removed that post. I have no friends in this life any longer. I'm a disappointment to everybody who liked me. I'm a pariah. News organizations at my door and, har har and uh, hassling my elderly parents. It's too much. Putting our address on TV and, and the internet. How could I ever go back to my small hometown where everyone knows me? This is once again, this is cancel culture talking. This is, Ed has found despair here. Ed feels like there is no way out. That he is, that he has forever been marked. Look at this. Look at this picture. This is Ed's father, their home address, and the disgusting news reporter who went up to him to ask about Ed's allegations to which Ed never even spoke about them. The only thing they had to go off of were a few screenshots from an Instagram page from a girl named Molly who had nothing to do with, with any sort of professional comic book industry. Um, and this is where Ed is at. This is where his head is at. He has reached despair and feels like he can no longer go for, uh, no longer continue further. Some good people reached out and tried to help me through this whole thing, but I'm just not strong enough. The instinctual part of my brain knows that I'm no longer part of the tribe. There it is. I, I mean, it is, do we need to even say any more? And the people who canceled him, the people who murdered him, say that the, the cancel culture doesn't exist, that this isn't a real thing, that, that saying cancel culture and mob mentality are harmful terms and it could be used in, a, um, in, a, in the wrong way, that they could be uh, seen as extremist terms. And I know I have that. Um, yep, here it is. Renfamous. Anybody in the comic space right now using the phase, phrase mob mentality is not a safe person and everyone should be taking note. No, no, no. It is the other way around. Renfamous and, and Twitter accounts like hers are the ones. Look at this. Here's Renfamous. I told you guys, I'm, I'm, we're showing everything tonight. We're bringing out the receipts. Liam McGuire, the Ed Pisker stuff is incredibly tragic, but the victim blaming needs to stop. Nope. We need to call out the people who murdered Ed Piscor. Uh, Joe Glass, what Ed Pisker done is tragic, awful, and so very sad. My thoughts are with his friends and family. It does not mean victims should be blamed for coming forward. To do so is the very reason they often don't come forward right away. Joe and his cronies in this whisper network killed Ed Piscor. He is trying to save himself from guilt because he knows that he was part of this. Ant waiting on edits for my something. Also, let's be clear, Pisker ending his life in this fashion is horrible, but it was also his choice. In no way should any of the people victimized by Pisker be held accountable for Pisker's actions. Absolutely incorrect. Incorrect. Pisker said it himself in his, le in his last will and testament. He said, hold Molly Wright accountable. He named his killers. He named his murderers and said, hold these people accountable. These are people who don't want to feel guilt, who want, don't want to feel shame, who, who can't feel guilt or shame because they are so narcissistic. And he goes on, I will not tolerate any victim blaming. I like I said, I told you guys, we have the receipts, right? I, I have everything in these tabs, everything I possibly could have thought of. We have it here tonight. Um, but this, the, when, when Ed says the instinctual part of my brain knows that I'm no longer part of the tribe, that is what cancel culture is meant to do. Cancel culture is meant to take you out of the place that you feel like you are part of. The, the place where you feel like you are connected with people, that you are um, part of a, a purpose, that you have purpose and meaning. And it is meant to rip you from that and, 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 uh, I keep using the word ostracized, but I really can't think of 
um, excommunicate, right? Any, any other term like that, excommunicate you from the community, from the fellowship so that you die alone. That is what these people want. They want silence from you because they want to dominate with their power. They want to, um, and I, I can't think of the word I'm looking for right now, but, uh, they, they, they want to, yeah, use their power for this. I'm, ex- uh, I'm exiled and banished. I'm giving into my instincts and fighting them at the same time. Self-preservation has lost out from the sound it, in everybody's voice. I think we all knew this was the conclusion. Jim Rung came to my house unsolicited and gave me a hug and told me he loves me. If you know Jimmy, you know how huge that is. I'm really happy that this was the last thing that Jim did with Ed. Um, I understand that Jim denounced Ed on his Instagram and said that they will no longer have a professional relationship. Um, However, I think that Jim giving Ed this hug meant the world to him. I think it meant everything in the end. And I think when Ed finally left us, um, I think he remembered the hug that Jim Rugg gave him. And uh, I, I, at least I hope that he does. Um, because even though Jim may have denounced him professionally, I hope that Jim was there for him as a brother and as a friend. <clears throat> I'm sorry to my family for making such a mess and for creating this hassle. He says, no pun intended. And for creating this hassle, I wasn't trying to be a creep. I'm also, and this is what's so sad. Ed says, I wasn't trying to be a creep. Ed is ending his life because he feels so shamed because people called him a creep. Because people accused him of being a creep. Being a creep is not a crime. Being being weird or, or socially awkward or, or the fact that you may not be able to talk to women, that is not a crime. And it's certainly no reason why anyone should feel like they should lose their life to that. He goes on to say, I'm also sorry to everyone who got this note and the baggage that may or may not come with it, depending on how well we know each other. I knew I wasn't going to be able to survive this. Comics is beyond a profession to me. It's everything. That, mu- that might sound sad and pathetic to some, but this culture and medium gave me the greatest joys in life. Um, if Ed were here, I would tell him it doesn't sound sad and pathetic at all. It sounds like a man who is passionate about his craft and who's devoted his life to it and has seen it wither away, has, has seen the industry kill him. Um, the thing that he gave his very life to was the very thing that took it. Um, I think that's, that's extremely sad. Uh, uh, Salty says, I don't think these individuals know what guilt is. That requires empathy as well as emotional maturity. They're years of intent, intentional, directed, and coordinated malice. Yeah, absolutely salty. Based on innuendo is their power. Oh yeah, these are sniper shots. And as Ed will say in this next um, in this next paragraph, it was a quote unquote kill shot. Absolutely salty. Um No public statements would do. Nobody against me would be convinced. Maybe this drastic move will convince a few. Maybe it will get a couple more people to consider not joining online lynch mobs over gossip. Because that's what this was. That's what this was, right? Gossip. It was online lynch mobs. So tell me again, when Ed says online mobs, is is there a reason why... These guilty parties, why these individuals within these whisper networks use the quote mob mentality, specifically talking about mobs because they read Ed's note and they said, we are going to be blamed for this. It's better we get ahead of this. It's better we get in front of this so that we don't get blamed for this. Um, Thank you again, Salty. Uh, JK says, I don't think we should hold anyone accountable. Rather, I think our society is a system that presumes innocence until proven guilty after an adversarial process. Um, I think, JK, this is, you know, it's tough because I, one of the first, one, one of the things that we do when we rationalize a death or when we try and rationalize a, a death like this is we always want to point fingers at people. And I, I will, I'm guilty of that. 
the first thing I did instinctually was who's to blame. And we do that for a lot of our problems, whether it's in our own lives or whether it's in our families, you know, uh, lives or whatnot. I think we always want to start pointing the fingers. Um, and this was a civil war. Look at Comicsgate. Comicsgate was saying, oh my gosh, the cancel pigs killed Ed Piscor. And the cancel pigs were saying, look, CG was the one who killed Ed Piscor. Um, it, some CG individuals were saying, you know, oh, I, you know, I hate Ed Piscor, you know, but, uh, you know, his, his passing is tragic. Um, and, and, and it goes on and on, right? The civil war continues. People were trying to point fingers. People were trying to say, well, this person's worse than this person. But ultimately, if I can try and, and have some sort of righteousness or justice, it is to speak with intentionality with the things that Ed said in his last statements, um, in his last words. And though I may never be able to hold these people accountable, right? I ha I can do this live stream. I can have a Twitter, but ultimately I am not the law. I am not police. I am not the judge, jury, and executioner, but I can at least call this out when I see it and begin to say, I, I really think it's important that we notice how awful these women were to Ed. And how, how awful this, this mob attacked him and who his killers were. Uh, because I think a lot of people don't know who they were or don't know the circumstances around it. Um, so, but, but I do agree with you, JK, when you say, I think our society has a, a system that presumes innocence until proven guilty after an adversarial process. Like, I, I think that people just instinctively think that someone is guilty immediately and that, no matter what they say or do, if, if a woman comes out and says, this guy did this to me, he's automatically guilty. And that's what I hate. And that's what I think. Um, that's what I think is so sad about this. So we saw other people with allegations lose their jobs in the industry and never got it back. Uh, even when the allegations are proven false. Yeah. Um, this is the model of heresy and fake victim glorifying that has existed in colleges since the early nineties. Yeah. Um, Ed's family should get as many receipts as the receipts as they can and sue and tort. They defamed him. Like when they claimed another account on Twitter was Ed's. Oh, we, we will be going over that hacks and acts. Um, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, let's see, where was I? Sorry, I'm trying to read off where I last was. No public statements would do. Nobody against me would be convinced. Maybe this drastic move will convince a few. Maybe it will get a couple more people to consider not joining online lynch mobs over gossip. Doubt it will have much of a blip. I'm not doing this out of guilt though. Once, it, And that's what a lot of people will say is that, oh, he's doing this. This is a, an admission of guilt. Ed admits that he's guilty. That's why he, he uh, ended his life. That's not what this is at all. He says, it was super dumb chatting with Molly D, who is the younger Molly. My intentions were never nefarious with her or anybody. I'm doing it out of immense shame. We're not built to have hundreds, maybe a few thousand people judging and or harassing us at once. A private and solitary mind can't take it. Once again, these are the effects of cancel culture. There were so many out there waiting in the wings for something like this to emerge. Daryl A.O. Braithwaite called it a kill shot. You all got your wish. You were waiting for something to blow out of proportion and it got served to you on a silver platter. Ramon Villalobos, Cam Del Ros Rosario, J.B. Rowe, Molly Wright, congratulations, you got your pound of flesh. Uh, Evan Dorkin, I hope skeletons from your closet get revealed someday. Alex DeCampi, may you continue to have zero success, no matter how hard you continuously leverage other people's business from your bully pulpit. That is a big paragraph. That is a massive paragraph. And Ed meant every single word. He intentionally specifically picked those people, chose those words. He, you could tell that he was, he has been thinking about this for days before he wrote this or had been writing this up until this point, until he felt 
like it was the right time to release it. The very next morning after Molly D posted the screen caps, I put my last will and testament together. Great service in a punch. Pinch, these are the papers I was trying to hide from you, Jimmy, when you came by with the soup. I actually found a nice lady in witness who no notarized it and made it official on a Sunday morning. How's that for efficiency? It's sitting on my brown desk in the corner. And this is where we get to the details of where everything is. Um, he discusses things about his family. He says, mom, dad, Bob, JP, and Bree, I'm sorry. Mom, dad, get this will of mine straight and move into a nice home that doesn't have many stairs. Leave whatever you don't use the rest of your lives for my siblings. Daddy hit me up this morning and wanted me to come home, but it's just too far gone. It was great hearing your voice today also, mama. The shame... <clears throat> The shame will never go away. Please make good use of what I've built up and take comfort for the rest of your years. This will give my life and this tragedy of events some positive meaning. These are the files for Switchblade, Switchblade Shorties. Please download. Maybe a book deal can be made. Um, maybe in death after I explain myself, it will be something they won't balk at. Then again, the culture is sick enough that maybe a bidding war among publishers will Push the price up even further. Bob, can you try to get my folks a sweet deal? My family can use the money. Please download these files ASAP when my Google Drive exists, but they are also on the portable hard drive in my backpack that I had with me during my final act. Don't let the cops keep it forever. I uh, brought my data with me so that it would be easy to find. Redacted. There's a black, black hardcover sketchbook full of auto, autobiographical comics on my brown desk standing up in the hutch next to drawing tablets that I intended to see print when I passed away. I didn't put anything in my will where that's concerned, but hopefully it can find a publisher and get released. It was what we were going to do with Fantagraphics under the title Mudfish. I didn't sign any paperwork on that with Fanta. So Bob, maybe you can help my parents there too. I realized that I didn't make any notes in the will about my uh, authored books and intellectual properties. Uh, Jim Rugg, can you maybe help make sure my people don't get jacked by the publishers? Um, I'm going to skip a few of these paragraphs just so we can um, get to some of his final words. He talks about cartoonist kayfabe making the videos public. He says, I was avoiding the internet as much as possible, mostly relying on some friends who relayed me info here and there. I was not making using, bur using burner sock puppet accounts to try to defend or attack. We will talk about that as well. Hopefully these accounts will still tweet a bit so that you guys believe that at least maybe someone can dig up IP addresses to confirm. What a week. I wouldn't wish this shit on my worst enemy. Leave it to me to get in trouble without ever leaving the house. I don't have an email address for my family. Please get this message to them. My phone is fully charged. He gives the number and the license plate. He also gives what he is wearing. He also talks about how much money he has in his uh, wallet. Or excuse me, sorry, that's down here. He talks about um, his mom and dad about their house. Uh, Anastasia, James, please hook my parents up with the artwork from the show. Once again, I'm guilty of being stupid, no doubt, but that's all. I never thought in a million years that I'd take this step, but I also never in a million years thought that something so Orwellian would ever happen to me. You never know in this life. Um, and unfortunately, I think that that is, that is why this is so Orwellian and so why this was so I think uh, the guys use this on their Tuesday night show on Josh's stream flippant um, because even I will admit that I was guilty and flippant of talking about this. Like it was just another news article that this was just another thing that was happening within the comics industry. If I knew now, of course we all wish we could say if we knew now, right. Um, but it, it's, it does feel like, we spoke about this a little bit too innocently and, and without any consequence. And it's odd that, you know, a, a YouTube channel that I watched in the mornings, getting ready to go to the gym or on my way to the gym, or maybe I'd watch it while I was uh, getting home from, from work or school. It's, those videos won't be up much longer. or Those videos won't continue to go with Ed, right? He he's gone. Um, and it, it feels odd talking about it. And that's kind of what he says here feels Orwellian. I was murdered by internet bullies. Those are his exact 
exact words. The second to last paragraph. I was murdered by internet bullies, massive amounts of them. Some of you out there absolutely contributed to my death as you were entertaining yourself with gossip. I wasn't AI, I was a real human being. You chipped little bits of my self-esteem away all week until I was vaporized. Maybe I'll be able to haunt you dorks as a ghost. I come from gypsy heritage and I'm definitely cursing a lot of you. This is the calmest I've felt all week. It's over for me. I'm sorry for the hurt it'll cause my family and close, closest buds. I hope it makes people think twice when joining an internet feeding frenzy. There you have it. Control freak to the last. Peace out. P.S. There's $852 in my wallet cash in case the J Jakes get sticky fingers and steal my shit. Eddie P. 1982 to 2024. So for those of you who do want to read his last words, his last will and testament, I have put the document in the description below. Uh, I would like to mention Rob's show was incredible. I highly, highly recommend if you guys can watch this at some point, please go watch Rob's show. Rob is a such an articulate, wise individual and passionate, compassionate, uh, articulate, like I said, intricate. He is a, a man of more high morals and integrity. So I, I please ask that uh, you guys go watch his show as well. Uh, Comics Matter with your boy Zach has been discussing this vehemently. Um, has been talking about all the individuals who caused this. Um, he's even go going so far as to post photos like this. This is a real like this is this is how far he's taking this. He is not holding back at all. Um, his caption is "Live." They hate that shit. And this is for those of you who don't know. This is Alex DeCampi. This was one of the individuals mentioned in Ed's last will and testament. After um, Ed posted that on April 1st, we didn't know where Ed was. Uh, news reports came in that he was not at home. They did a wellness check. He wasn't at home. We later were con we we then confirmed later uh, through his family that Ed was found dead and he was no longer with us. Um, I do not know the extent of how he ended his life, um, but we honestly, at this point, I don't even think that's really, really matters. Um, but what started this, right? What started all of this? What, what was the initial allegations? And I think a lot of people ask themselves, what was so awful that Ed did to where an entire internet mob had nothing better to do than attack a famous comic book creator? What would make a man write a three to four page will and testament so detailed, so passionate, so hurt, so filled with hurt? And um, what, what was it that he did? Well, these were the initial posts from Sid Goblin or the young Molly who he talks about in his letter. And she posts this DM which he says, drawing anything cool lately, nerdy girl? She posts a photo. She says, just self-indulgent doodling today. He says, you're so freaking, or you're so fucking good, Molly. Molly posts this and says, okay, Ed Piscor is a fucking creep, in all caps. He likes little high school girls and slid into my DMs when I was 17 years old. Now, remember, like I said earlier, when we were reading Ed's last will and testament, what is Molly's intention here? Why does Molly put this out now? Why does she feel now that she's been wronged? Why does she feel that now she's been groomed with Ed when they haven't had communication for a little while? Because like, like Ed said in, in his post, in his uh, last will, they spoke during COVID. This was three years ago, maybe four years ago when everything was locked down. So why does she feel now the need to come out with this? Um... Why is she making this public? Why is she claiming that he is grooming her? Um, and and some of the language that she uses is really intentional. I feel like very intentional. 
He likes little high school girls. Little high school girls, 17 years old, you're about to turn 18. He hasn't sent you dick pics. He hasn't sent you nudes. He hasn't requested nudes. He hasn't touched you. You haven't been physically together. She says, I didn't know of him. And he found me simply by liking one of his pictures. Once again, if we read Ed's testament, he said she liked his pictures and did so in mass. I mean, like love bombed the shit out of his Instagram uh, profile and she kept liking all of his photos. She says, I didn't know him and he found me simply by liking one of his pictures, um, sending me a post of myself in my school uniform, calling me a cute nerdy girl and saying to come out to Pittsburgh and stay with him. He'd take me out to lunch to, uh, to meet other PG cartoonists. Overall fucking weird with no gray area for what he was trying to do over the course of a year. Obvious to anyone on this planet. Calling me a good girl and naughty girl all the time. Sending me unfin unfinished pages of his as a secret and gassing me up constantly, basically trying to groom me into whatever the fuck. Once again, nothing that he has done right now is illegal. And you can say, oh, it seems creepy. Oh, it seems groomy. Oh, it seems whatever. She is 17 years old, about to turn 18. She has not, he has not committed crime, a, a crime. Saying my art was so good and saying he'd promote my work. Eventually, as COVID phased out, and I think he saw it was not just some nobody high school girl drawing gore art, I started ghosting him. So towards the end of COVID, she started ghosting him and they stopped talking from what it sounds like here. So why is she bringing this stuff up now? Eventually understanding this was weird as fuck. Okay, Molly, you say this is weird as fuck. You say that he's grooming you. You're saying you're, you know, uh, throwing all these allegations at him. What's the point? What is she trying to do? She's trying to get him canceled. She's trying to end his career. She is trying to gain clout. And like I said, when this first came out, I didn't want to think that. When, the, when all these allegations first came out, the last thing I wanted to do was to say, oh my God, she's just lying. She's just looking for clout. She's just, she just wants to use this information. That was what I, I didn't want to do that. But after reading what Ed had put out, I, I, I'm, how can you not think that this woman was strictly trying to cancel a man who she had vile intentions with trying to cancel him or end his career so that she could be brought into the limelight. She says, I don't like fucking sex pests. I don't like creepy old men who think they have the ability to play around with malleable young girls with no real grasp on the situation because their predator have a successful career in comics. If anyone would like to see further evidence of this, just DM me. I don't have a problem posting the rest of the screenshots, but I don't feel the need to share it in, uh, it in evidence in, extensive detail for hours and hours. Ed could argue and say that his, uh, this was not his intention or that he was just being friendly. I find nothing normal or friendly about a 40 year old man asking a high school girl about her classes, calling her a good girl, naughty girl, etc., asking her to come visit him saying we'll be partners in crime and asking if I snitch or not like what the fuck. This is not a cancellation of Ed Piscor. Those are her words here. This is not a cancellation of Ed Piscor. What else is it then? Right? And that's that's kind of my question is, if she's posting this, what's her intention? What is she trying to say? If you're not, if you're not trying to cancel someone, are you just trying to get the word out there? But she knows that by doing something like this, that everyone will begin to attack him. When, when the whole Me Too era um, happened, what did we see with women there? Women were falsely accusing men and then more women would come out of the woodwork and say, oh, finally, my truth can be heard. But when women lie to get clout, the women who have actually been hurt lose all credibility. And so this is, this is what is what's scary to me. There are women in the comic book industry who genuinely are being groomed or who are genuinely uh, asking for help. And, and mo these mollies are not making it any better for them. 
And so you get Villa Lobos, you get these guys on Twitter saying, I want to be a, a white knight. I want to, I want to make comics a, a safer place for women. You're making it worse for these women. In, in my opinion, I genuinely believe that when, when these allegations are thrown out so easily without thought of consequence, you are making the comic book industry a worse place for women because now it's the boy who cried wolf. Now, if a woman posts this after the death of Ed Piscor, who is going to believe her? Because we're, everyone's going to say, don't believe a word she just said because we need to hear from the man. Because if he doesn't, if we don't, we could have another, we could have another death on our hands, right? And, and that is what is so sad is that the women who genuinely are asking for help probably won't get it because of instances like this. I'm reiterating my point, so I'll, I'll just keep going. But um, uh, Josh says exactly what else is it? She may say that, but she's only trying to make herself feel better. And I think she's trying to protect herself from, because why, yeah, like you said, Josh, why say that unless she knew what she was doing by saying, oh, I'm, I'm not trying to cancel him. That's exactly what you're trying to do. You know exactly what you're doing. Why else would you post these allegations? Why else post these direct messages? Just to go, go hey guys, just, just a warning. Everyone be cool. Ed's a cool guy. Everything's fine. But just a warning, he is trying to groom me. I, 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 there's, no, there's no good end to that. There's no positive end to that. Um, and, and JK... I am just as flawed as all of these people is, you know, we are all flawed. We all sin. I will never claim that I'm better than anyone uh, because I also have my vices. I also have my strongholds that I, I deal with and that I struggle with. Um, I, I do think, like I said, that it is important that we discuss how dangerous these actions are and how scary it can be for men who legitimately have done nothing or who may have been creepy or who may have done, made a mistake and yet they have no room for redemption because of what our current culture is pushing. Um, yeah, Zach's stand with the people you care about uh, when the waters get choppy. Amen, brother. Um, and and that's you know and that's also the thing i know i when this came out i didn't want to pass judgment just saying ah she's lying so we all took her at you know hashtag believe all women right we all took her at her word we said you know what no she's right this is horrible these allegations are terrible we 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 you know ed should ed should be held accountable And then, and then, and then this happens, right? Um, so we can, as a society say, this is wrong. We can, as a society say that destroying someone with allegations and wrecking their career with, uh, without hearing anything is, is wrong as well. Uh, absolutely. Uh, she continues. Mm, this is not a cancellation of Ed Piscor. I'm just telling you the truth about this person, the truth that a lot of other cartoonists are aware of, who I know for a fact are aware of that Ed Piscor likes young girls. Young girls, once again, what is young girls? She's 17 at this point. She is 17 years old. She's not 12. She's 17. And he will try to use his fame to get them to FaceTime him, give him attention, or make them come and stay with him. I don't know if this was work for him, but it doesn't matter. This behavior is disgusting. This is me saying what happened in 2020 to 2021. And if this happened to you, you're not alone, unfortunately. I need it. This is what gets me. This next sentence. She she makes a joke. And I'm sorry, but if you have a if you have PTSD, I, I understand, you know, making kind of a gallows humor or trying to make light of a situation. But if she truly was gutted by this whole scenario, if she felt like she truly was groomed 
this next joke does not land and has no place here and feels really off-putting. She says, I need a t-shirt that says Ed Piscor tried to groom me and I didn't even get a free copy of X-Men Grand Design. That doesn't sit right with me. It seems off and really tone deaf. To this day, Ed Piscor slides in my DMs calling me kiddo, further confirming our inappropriate age gap. Seeing that I'm not just some random girl who can draw, that he can groom enough to come to Pittsburgh to watch him do his stupid strips he's doing now about little girls from broken homes. Switchblade shorties is disturbing coming from a fucking creep who likes little girls. What the fuck? Um, these were more uh, text messages. Her last thing that she posts, she says, I unfortunately feel the need to state that this is not what this was about. I'm not trying to say this. I was answering freely. I felt like he was trying to groom me. So I guess she's saying this in lieu of when she said uh, one of her messages before. But she says, I feel or I felt like he was trying to groom me. This is about the inappropriate nature of Ed Piscor's communication with me. I was way younger than him and starstruck that someone famous, quote unquote, liked my art and was posting to essentially no one but my friends. This relinquish relinquishes all responsibility. I was young and dumb and I, you know, he's famous. So what am I going to do? I'm, I'm just going to say yes. Zero responsibility. Well, he's a man, he's older, he's he's a famous artist, he's messaging me, I'm 17, I'm 18 years old, I, I don't have it all put together, I don't know, he's famous, he's texting me, he's messaging me, it's not, you know, zero responsibility. Zero responsibility for her messaging him back, texting him back. This is wild though. She says, also having a boyfriend who knew of his work and wanted me to push and respond to him did not help. So now she's got a boyfriend who's saying, yeah, yeah, keep talking to him in his DMs. Yeah, that because that'll get you in good graces with a lot of these artists. This whole situation is just so weird and just so uncalled for. This should have never happened. And unfortunately, we're... we're seeing the consequences of something like this, right? Also having a boyfriend who knew of his work wanted uh, me to push and respond to him did not help. I am totally fine. I'm not trying to ruin anyone's career or try and say people shouldn't reach out to other artists or artists stop reaching out to their audience on social media or whatever the fuck. I'm stating that it was weird. I was a 17 turning 18, a senior in high school. So then what, here we go again. What was she trying to do? Her, her words say, I'm not trying to ruin anyone's career or try and say people should reach out to other artists. I'm just stating that it was weird, okay? Sure. She just wanted to state that it was weird, but also secretly she wanted to cancel him so that she could get clout for this. I'm, she goes, I'm totally fine. I'm not trying to ruin anyone's career. Then what were you trying to do? Ruin his career? Oh, oh, did I say that out loud? Of course, it, what else, what other purpose is there to call someone out other than to say, hey, stop talking to this guy. Get rid of him. He's weird. He's, he's a creep. He's trying to groom me. Everyone be on my side. I'm not responsible for this. I didn't do anything. But everyone go after him because he's the weirdo. She says he was 40. There is no good or wholesome reason for, reason for a grown-ass man to be calling a young girl naughty or telling her to come visit him. I, here's the thing. That is weird. Of course it is. But it is still not illegal, and it still doesn't mean that a man's life should have been lost. Um, perving on her pictures in her uniform, constant complimenting with vague implications of helping her career by sticking with him. That is what I'm trying to say by stating this shit. I'm 21 now. I don't 
like that sex pests can do whatever the fuck they want and everyone just lets them because they have success in any field. What if I went into his house? Was more naive, more desperate for attention. Weird as fuck. I don't know what goes on in his life. So what if it's possible he's continued to do this since? Do people know and say nothing? That was the last thing she said about that. Her Instagram account is currently uh, hidden or deleted. Um, sorry, I'm just reading, just reading you guys in chat. Uh, and thank you guys again for being so respectful and not sending any super chats. Uh, once again, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, it means a lot, um, that we, uh, that, that we make sure, um, you know, that, that we don't want to monetize this. Right. So, uh, so this is Molly Wright, the older Molly. This is the individual who piggybacked off of young Molly and, and completely lied about this, at least from, uh, from Ed's written response before he ended his life. He said, hold Molly right accountable. The, these, uh, messages, this context is from Molly, Wright. I deleted, I, I'll delete this eventually because I don't want this gross, slimy scumbag to taint my timeline for good. So I'll keep this short and brief. Several people are coming forward with their Ed Pisker stories. Several people, one person. That was Molly. At first, I struggled, shrugged it off because I've known he was a creep for a very long time, which some of you already know because I've very been very vocal about it. Once again, she says he's a creep, not a groomer, not a pedophile, not a rapist. He hasn't committed a crime uh, because I've already been very vocal about it. But recently, I learned that one of them was a minor he was pursuing a minor at the same time as me. I know she's getting a ton of shit for what happened, so I'm posting this in support of her. Also, to the in support of her or in or against Ed. Also, to the weird people saying we're doing this for press, dude is literally a fucking loser that had to resort to making a YouTube channel to pressure small comic shops into bulk buying a bunch of unusable comics from him that take up space on shelves while he uses false bulk ordering numbers to falsify his success. What the? F I'm sorry, what? This is no longer about Ed being a creep or Ed being... A She's has a personal vendetta for this man. After this man. What, what What is she going on about? If you are trying to call out someone who is who has uh, committed a crime against you or, or committed a sexual act that was heinous against you that you want to come out and speak about, you're not going to go, and he's bulk ordering his comics and his comics are lame and he had to fucking start a loser YouTube chant. What does that have to do with anything here against any of these sexual allegations? Zero. She's a woman scorned who wanted to dogpile because she finally felt comfortable enough to hashtag believe all women. Um, I remember when this guy first met me and tried to impress me before the channel existed, he would talk shit on Jim Rugg and call him a bad artist and also said he would never draw gore for attention. Uh, for those of you who know that's insane, yeah, that's personality type we're working with here. Anyway, it's so weird seeing him use the same lines on me, calling me good girl and nerdy bum on a literal child. I'm speechless. Anyway, I'll be deleting this. Like I said, because this guy doesn't deserve any more attention ever again. Uh, this is also the woman who, like I said, uh, convinced everyone that Ed has had essentially solicited, uh, a sexual favor, a blow job, oral sex, um, so that she can meet his, uh, agent or something. All right. I think that is everything up until now. Those are the allegations. Those are the things that Ed has said um, in terms of his last words before his uh, his death. He was buried yesterday, thir or sorry, excuse me, uh, buried on Thursday. Now, what was the response? Who were the individuals on Twitter talking about this? What was going on during this whole debacle and what was happening after the funeral? 
Once again, this is Molly Wright. Do not go contact her. Do not go try and follow her or anything. But um, these are these are the Mollies, essentially. This is her YouTube. I think she does cartoons or something. This is her Instagram. Obviously, these are hidden for good reason. This is Josh's stream. I highly recommend you guys go watch Josh's stream if you guys haven't already. They talked uh, in great detail and with a ton of reverence and respect. Um, here is the first Molly. This is young Molly. This is the initial Molly who came out with the allegations, who was saying he groomed me when I was 17, blah, blah, blah. This is Molly uh, uh, Sid Goblin. Um, these are some of her pieces of work, I believe. Um, since then, Rob Liefeld has come out with a video, uh, and multiple people on Twitter has, have spoken about this. So let's get to some of these, uh, let's get to some of these comments, um, because I want to try and make sure we cover all of them. Uh, but it, uh, oh gosh. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. So let me do this. I'm going to invite the guys in at this point so that we should, so that we can, um, look at some of these individuals. Um, I'm going to save Rob's, uh, Rob Liefeld's for a second. I'm going to read this post from uh, Tiso Spencer. Tiso says, I wanted to keep my opinions on the confirmation of Ed's suicide to myself. However, there's been too much nonsense from people like Vicky blaming EVS and Comicsgate when it's actually the leftist SJW mentality that did Ed Piscor in. So Vicky, if you guys don't know, Vicky verse, um, I believe is, oh no, it's, it's not Renfamous. I believe it's someone else. Um, he says EVS was sympathetic to Ed's situation. Why? Because he's been canceled and put into the same situation. Comicsgate isn't to blame. EVS isn't to blame. Pisker should have let the legal system clear his name and reputation. Um, I will never believe any allegation, especially from women under any circumstance. And this is why I say it's comments like this from people who make me say, oh, shoot, look, look at where we are now. It is going to be infinitely more difficult for women to actually come forward and and speak out about something that has happened or uh if something wrongfully happened to them uh because of of this right here the uh this individual says i will never believe any allegation especially from women under any circumstances The optics for what he allegedly said is bad, but he could have recovered from this situation. He could have absolutely. He should have had the strength to face his cancellation, especially considering he was part of the same crowd that cheered on the cancellation of people like EVS. Now, this individual says karma. I do not think that is appropriate whatsoever. I don't think that using the term karma in this situation should be, shouldn't be, shouldn't be, not now. Right. Um, there have been instances where uh, EVS has talked about Ed Piscor not taking pictures with people in Comicsgate because he doesn't want to associate with him. Uh, and to be fair, Ed Piscor probably would have hated my guts considering that I'm a Christian conservative um, and I buy comics from Comicsgate. I read and, and have talked to people within Comicsgate. He probably would have hated my guts, right? That doesn't make this loss any more or it doesn't make this any less significant. This is still extremely difficult. And, uh, and I feel that, um, you know, I feel that having it be a, uh, CG versus SJW thing. I don't know. Um, so ideator, thank you so much for the $5 brother. Um, I will try and find a way to donate this to Ed's family. Uh, if I cannot, um, I will make sure that this goes to a, um, you know, suicide prevention, um, you know, fund or, or some sort of service. Uh, so just a, just a heads up for the chat. Uh, I, I really appreciate you guys super chatting, but 
Um, I will be sending this. Uh, I will not be taking this money. We've demonetized the stream. Uh, I want to make sure that this goes strictly to either Ed's family or some sort of um, suicide prevention fund. Uh, but ID Eater says, you boy, Zach has been going hard on these on those responsible. Comics is devoid of the cool people we once knew and is now filled with disgusting creatures. Um, and ID Eater, that is the sad thing, is that a lot of these people within this industry have become vile, evil, cruel, cruel people wanting to watch people suffer. Cruel, cruel individuals. Um, Josh, I uh, thank you, Sal Salty and Josh. Um, and Josh, I sent you the link if you would like to join as well. Uh, let's go ahead and add Drew in here. Um, yeah, brother, thanks for being here. Sorry to uh, have you kind of wait for a little bit, but I, I figured I just wanted to get some of the initial allegations out of the way until we began speaking about some of his, um, some of the people who I think were responsible for this action, right? Yeah, you're fine. I, I, I a busy night. I was, I've been uh, working on some, some stuff anyway, so I was watching and listening while I was working. So, hey, this is a good time just to kind of dovetail into a correct time. But yeah, you've done a great job so far, Max. Oh, thank you, dude. Yeah, I appreciate that. No, it's um, it's tough, right? Because yeah, even tough. with we've we've covered this on so many different live streams, and yet I still feel like I haven't done a good job of like covering everything. Yeah, but yeah, because yeah. there's well, not just that, but there's it things are slowly coming out from mm -hmm. certain individuals, so things that they've said. Mm -hmm. Images of some of the women that have been posted now coming out, they're leaking, and uh, you do the you do the best you can with what you're getting. And it's just Absolutely. unfortunate to see on top of it, but it just things just uh, get gets flipping. You, but Max, you've done a great job, kind of summing up what's happening and trying to maintain a good neutral view with morality included, because it's very clear, like you said, uh, Max, is that these individuals they have no morality center. There is no center to to root to reach from to grasp on for a sense of like uh just understanding of the, uh, the human condition understanding humanity in general understanding forgiveness not and forgiveness is not a shakedown like what these, what these individuals want if you if 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 ed were still alive i'm willing to guarantee this if ed were still alive he had, if he had bent the knee to them it would have been a we're in situation where they would have been like okay it's forgiveness but with stipulations it's going to be a shakedown with what we're going to want from you. And um, it, it's sad. And that's such a good point, Drew, that, that you mentioned. Even if Ed were to come out and apologize, people would be like, oh, there's stipulations with that. You can't just apologize. You have to make sure that you say you're not going to do this or you're not going to do that. It'll never be enough for these people, right? Um, it'll never, never it'll be, never be enough. And I think he knew that. He took his life because he knew I will never. Now we know, as as individuals who cover this on our YouTube channels, we know that you can be redeemed. You can come back from cancel culture. But for someone who is isolated, for someone who only sees the the bad on online, absolutely, Ed felt like there was no coming back from this. Um, yes. So, so yeah, uh, a couple yeah. things on. Oh, sorry, yeah, a couple things on that. It's like we, you, me. Max, and a few, a few some of uh, the other person, others of us, we we have a religious background, you know, and we understand forgiveness, redemption. It's a part of life, and these individuals lack that that belief center, and it shows very clearly. And with, with comics uh, in general, I think Josh can agree. Hey, Josh, that there Hello. is tribalism. Tribalism yeah. very much it, it, it exists, and the tribe that Ed was with. He felt they had his back. And when his tribe more or less went after him and shunned him, he's cast out. I mean, because he, he chose a side. He thought they had his back. And he was cast out like a leper. And he mm. was cut loose. And when they cut him loose, he thought, who's going to have my back now? I've got no one. Josh, now that you're kind of joining us, um, do you have any thoughts on the I, – I know that you guys have done – uh, a massive stream on your show. And, and I, I kind of showed it very briefly, but uh, have you, now that we've kind of had a week 
to think about this now that more people have come out and begun to say, uh, you know, oh, don't use mob mentality. Don't do the victim blaming thing or blah, blah, blah. Um, do you have any thoughts about any of this, uh, the stuff that's been currently being said on Twitter or any thoughts about this whole situation? I mean, for me, I think a lot of them are, a lot of it's just those people trying to save face as best as possible. Mm. Um, you know, and, and I do think there is, uh, some blame that that has to fall you know on their hands um i i will disagree with a little bit i i i mean i understand that the the use of saying you know ed was murdered uh i i do want to say at the end of the day he made a decision and i i think it was the wrong decision um mm -hmm. and and i you know like from a legal standpoint i don't think there's anything you can do to say these people are murderers however uh, you know, there, there's definitely defamation of character here. There's definitely monetary losses here. That's something you, you can legally pursue. And I hope the family does for, for Ed's sake, um, just to kind of clear his name a little bit, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think as, as individuals, we need to choose our words carefully. And I think we need to, um, I, I think we can all benefit to just show some, some grace, um, as hard as that is sometimes that's one of the things I struggle with the most, uh, and, and then kind of let, I mentioned this in the chat earlier, but, you know, let the law run the way the, the law is supposed to run. Uh, you know, it, I think it's fine to have a commentary. I think, I think as human beings, we need to discuss things. I think discussions overall are very good. Uh, but I think we need to make sure those discussions don't turn into name calling or the blame game or slandering. And that's where I, I, where and why I say we have to choose our words carefully. So, mm. And th that's a great point. And um, thank you for mentioning that because a lot of times I want to point fingers. A lot of the time I want justice. Uh, I think I said earlier in the stream that the first thing I wanted to do was who's responsible for this, right? Um, and I think it's just like within our nature to want to blame someone and go like, and to point at someone and go like, this is the person who is responsible for this. Um, but like you said, it, it can be scary because it can be judgmental. Um, and I think the language of who murdered Ed Piscor, I, I agree that it is a little harsh um, and that he did take an action, that this was his action. But I think that the people that were responsible for him doing, taking that action, um, I don't know. I, I just, I don't think that uh, not having the discussion is the right course of action. Oh, no, and completely I agree. And, and I look, think that's it, what you're mentioning, right? Yeah. So Right. Yeah. And, and look, if you ask me, do these people drive him to kill himself? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and my stance on saying, uh, I don't know if we should say they murdered him is I, and look, not a lawyer. Okay. But I, I think if, and again, this goes back to choosing our words carefully, but I think for it to, to legally even be considered some type of murder, I think there would have to be a call to action for one of these people to say, oh, you need to mm -hmm. just kill yourself. And that has not happened as far as that's, I know. That's fair. Yeah. And that's fair. I think with their intention, we can only assume. Um, but assuming would get us nowhere. Uh, now, if, if you ask. If there's any legal recourse that's going to happen, it's going to be against the news network. I really feel like they have a oh. good lawsuit on their yeah. hands or, or any of the mall either of the mollies mm -hmm. right uh, either of the mollies i think they have legal recourse and and i hope that the brother takes advantage of that um to that, that was those were ed's last words hold these people accountable now whether he was talking to us whether he was talking to his family his brother his mom his dad whoever ed truly wanted these people to have justice for what had happened. Um, and so, yeah, I, I wish that we could all be judge dread, right. And we could be punisher or something, but, uh, that's not, <laughs> that's not our real world. And that's, you know, I'm not, I'm not endorsing anything. I'm not condoning anything. I'm just saying in these situations, you feel like I, I just wish I could do something. Right. And that's why I think a lot of people feel helpless in these scenarios because they're just like, I, I wish I could help. And, and we can't, um, yeah. but we can, we can try and do our best to hope, hope that this never happens again. Yeah, so. That's why this whole situation more or less angers me than anything else. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. like hey, Grant, when, I first, when I read the letter on Monday, when I shared with you guys, I was sad and upset, sad and pissed off. Now I'm just pissed off because this, yeah. 
like we said, we said of course they had to get this shit has to stop. And by by saying who they who did that, well, quote unquote, who did this, uh, by saying their names, it's 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 helping. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna re- continue to read this because I think that this is pretty interesting. Um, I don't necessarily agree necessarily agree with all this, but I think that there this is a good discussion point for us to either push back on some of this or agree with some of this. Uh, this was a post by an individual called Tiso Spencer. Um, he says Ed's actions point paint a guilty party when he deleted his social media accounts, deletes cartoonist kayfabe starts making a will and ultimately ends his life. He no longer has a voice to defend himself. So cancel pigs win, his enemies win, his family and friends lose, he loses. Mm. And that is one of the sad realities of, taking one's life is that um we we do lose you know um well the, the, the thing about that like, i'll disagree with what he said there is that we talked about this in the past few shows is that when we said comic books was his life he ate right. breathed drank slept comics and that was his community he had his tribe and when you take all that that one thing that is one guy's whole life he has nothing ed had nothing when they, they took that away from him so I think that just from a psychological aspect, he wasn't guilty. It was just taken from him. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, the, what I will add to that too, though, is like the the moment they started deleting stuff, one of the conversations we had is this does not look good. The perspective exactly. of him deleting this does not look good uh, yeah. because it it brings about the, the uh, notion that you're trying to hide more. Um, and then now that we are, are, you know, after the fact of, of what happened, you know, I, I mentioned uh, on my live stream, I was like, you know what, maybe it was just a reaction on his part. Uh, Cause I, di- I don't know what was going on on social media. I don't know if he was getting blown up. I don't know if, you know, hundreds of people were going in making comments about him being, you know, a pedophile or whatever. Sorry. I don't know if we're. Oh, that word. you're good. Um, yeah. I'm, we're using that but, word for sure. And, and gosh, um, I'm sure that word was brought up plenty of times. I'm sure. It was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I'm just, it, that's where I'm saying sometimes perspective helps. Um, and then there was also, you know, kind of what Aaron had said on, on Wes's channel Saturday morning when this, when we're discussing this is we were asking, why is Ed being so quiet? Why hasn't he said anything? And, and what our thought was, was that he was actually building a legal case. And we're like, you know, if that's mm. the case and he's doing that good for him. Uh, and then unfortunately we, we see that was not the case. We know that now. Um, so yeah, mm. it's, it's sad. Are, yeah, are you going to read this? Josh, oh, sorry, but the way you just said legally is that Josh, a lot of times a lawyer will tell you to don't talk. It's a smart not to say anything because what yeah. you say, what you post, can be used against you in Absolutely. their court of law. And we thought he was just being quiet because his lawyer told him to shut up, but no. Oh. Yeah. Um, and Drew, I, I wanted to also bring up kind of something you had mentioned. Uh, the fact that they took everything from him, that's like I said earlier, I think that that is part of cancel culture. They need, they, in order to fully remove you from the industry, from your community, from your friends, from anything is to make you feel so deprived of the thing that makes you feel whole or passionate or, or, um, uh, like you have purpose that you want to end yourself. Um, and thankfully for, I think for us, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, th- I think thankfully for us, a lot of us are, um, are people, uh, men of faith, men and women of faith. Mm. And so our purpose lies in our faith, right. In our, in our, in our God and in our savior and, um, nothing can take that away from us. And, and that's something that is instilled within our, our beliefs. Um, and when Ed has something like this, it's sad to see that, flawed people, flawed humans that are, that are vile, vile human beings, um, could take this away from him is, is very, very sad and very angering. So sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Drew. Yeah. So what you, what you just said, that's just, these individuals do not believe that they're flawed. They believe that they are, they don't believe they're capable of being flawed. They don't believe it's just, they don't have that, that moral center where it's like, oh yeah, we are imperfect beings. They don't believe that they are perfect in every way. The other thing I was mm-hmm. going to say is that I had mentioned this on Monday. I said to share with you is a clip in the Twilight Zone. There's an episode called The Obsolete Man. It, there's a lot of the elements in that episode of The Twilight Zone. Very great episode, Burgess Meredith, that feel very reflective to what happened in this situation. Ed was deemed obsolete in this situation. Mm-hmm. What happened? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, that's the, the, that was a brilliant Twilight Zone episode episode, and it really hits home. Um, let's see, Alex DeCampi, Molly Dwyer, the Pittsburgh News Agency, the people Ed mentions in his suicide note, cancel mob mentality, leftist SJW should be held accountable for his death. It's murder. Let the law decide who is responsible. But Molly and Alex should be at the top of that list. Um, I think we already kind of spoke about what what that means, but. Um, and, uh, Lupo, uh, in the chat, um, I will, it, regardless of whether he was a, a good man or someone I agree with or someone who committed a crime or, you know, any of that stuff, I think the conversation around his, uh, taking of his life, um, is more important than anything else. Uh, so, I said at the very beginning of the stream, a lot of people are going to go, well, he's a, he's a creep or, oh, he's, he's an asshole or, oh, he tried to cancel. So it's good that he got canceled and all this stuff. Um, I am going to try and refrain from that as much as possible because at the end of the day, Ed's gone. That That's, it's as simple as that. Right. And we can sit here all day and go, was he guilty? Was he not guilty? Uh, what did he do that was wrong? Or was he an asshole? Or did he try and cancel people? But at the end of the day, he's not here with us anymore. And, well, I, um, so, yeah. I'll also add in some, some of the people that I know that I know personally that I think are doing the best work. Uh, and when I say work, I don't mean like art or anything. I'm talking about how they live their lives and how they're helping people. Some of the people that I know that are the most effective in impacting other people's lives in, in positive ways are people that were considered bad people in their past. Uh, mm. you know, they're convicts or, or whatever it might've been. Um, so, you know, I, I just, I think to try to devalue someone's life because of something that they did, uh, is, is short sighted and, uh, immature and, mm. and look, and I'm saying that as someone who, who had some kind of, uh, I guess you can say disparaging comments about Ed when these allegations first came out of, I have heard from other people, A, B, and C, you know, I, and that's where, you know, on my stream, we were talking about, we have to be reflective and kind of what we, we have said, and should we take it back? And, you know, Aaron's comment about being flippant, but uh, yeah, just, just because someone is making mistakes now, doesn't mean that's who they're going to be for the rest of their life. And I, mm -hmm. I think we need to, to remember that the, the now is not forever. Uh, yeah. Whether you're looking at someone as being bad or you're someone in an ed situation that is dealing with these thoughts and thinking there's no way out of this. I can't see through the weeds. Yeah, redemption is not instantaneous. It, redemption yeah. is is a road, you know, long and long and or short. And I don't. It's it's just, it's a shame that. We, yeah, it's. Are you gonna read? Breaking. Are you gonna read that or? Um, I, I was just gonna bring it up, and because I, I thought that this was a you know an interesting yeah. point too. Um, and the, and the fact that cancel culture, they think they can take everything from you. They feel like they have power, um, but it really is. You, I, I think Drew brought this up, uh, you know, the other night. You need those support systems in order to ground yourself to to push mm -hmm. back against these, you know, these cruel, cruel people to say, you know, you have no power here, right? So, yeah. But. And and look, Ed even admitted that he was a loner, you know, and and that's yeah. uh, I think that's a sad aspect. And we were kind of mentioning this in the chat, but. You know, in a lot of ways, we have, you know, we have family uh, that we and it looks like he had family that he was, you know, loved and close to. Uh, but sometimes with family, you know, you you don't uh, discuss the kind of the darker sides of your life. And sometimes you have, you know, friends where you can share some of the things that you don't necessarily want to share with other people. And mm -hmm. your friends can be there to say, like, yeah, that's, you know, uh, whatever the context is, they can comment on it. And, and oftentimes your friends are going to say, but I love you. Um, hmm. and I've had some friends in my life that have been there for me in that respect. And when things get tough or when things get hard, and I, I've never, I'll say this up front, I've never, you know, considered suicide. There was a point in my life where I've thought, is it ever going to get better than this? But hmm. suicide was not something that I put on the table, but I had friends in my life that I knew were there for me regardless. Um, and it, I just, it's to me, it's sad that Ed didn't have that. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just try yeah, try. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the price of being a loner like he was. And because uh -huh. any I mean, I, I knew that he he was solitary because he was always at his drawing board. He was always working. 
work, yeah. work, yeah. work, draw, draw. I mean, every time, he, this is what he was doing. He loved comics. He was working. And that like, we, we know, not maybe not many people in the audience know, but when you're an artist, you're a creator, it's, it's, it's going to be a solitary process. It's a solitary life. And this is a repercussion of that, fortunately. Yeah. And, and I'll even add, like, I feel like as far as mental health goes, my mental health is at its worst when I'm like alone and letting my own thoughts get the best. Mm -hmm. of me. So, and yeah. we, we talked about it this morning, Josh, on the, on our Warhammer stream. Yeah. Um, what, what's our worst, what's our worst trait? We fall into ourselves when we get depressed, you know, yep. um, some people uh, project it, right? Um, I think a lot of people on, on the internet, on Twitter, will go, oh God, you know, uh, they, they like to be professional victims and they, they're just like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened to me. But some people, they internalize that shit and that becomes just in all encompassing and enveloping and then they can't get out of it. So uh, you've actually had to check in on me every now and then where, I, where I've kind of taken uh, a beat where I just go, I need a week. Right. And, and you guys have checked in on me and just been like, Hey, just checking in, you know, sending a funny gif or a funny video or something, just what's going on, brother, you know? Um, because yeah, that, that tends to be the case with a lot of men is they just, some shit happens, internalize, go, go into your house, go into your home, go into your, to your house, close the door. Don't talk about it. Once you're finished, once you're good, you're, you're, you're good. Right. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think we spoke about this earlier when you guys weren't on. Um, but I, so I think we can move on from this, but do you guys have anything about this whole, we, 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 we kind of talked about the, I mean, it's the, it's the same people that, that we've seen time and time again that are asking, Oh, don't, don't use mob mentality. You know, that's, that's not right. That's, you know, don't be victim blaming or anything or what did they call it? Yeah. Victim blaming. Um, you guys have anything else on this or, or do you want to move on to another, another set of quotes? Uh, I, I'll, I'll just say it's disappointing and it's, in, it's from a human being for just as a human being, it's, it's disappointing. It's sad. And yeah. just no, really no regret or sadness or just in real degree of empathy of what happened. There's no, a, no inward. It just, it shows a lack of a soul, a lack of a conscience, these comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yep. imagine what this would read. Take that bottom paragraph off, right? Imagine how this would read if Joe just put, uh, what Ed Pisker done is tragic, awful, and so very sad. My thoughts are with his friends and family. Um, yeah. End it there. It. End it there. Or, or maybe after that, he goes, I'm so sorry for anything that I've caused or if I have played part in this. Um, like, but oh no, God, he... Right. Oh, 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 wow. He actually has some sense of conscience. Um, yes. And and you just we will read more of these. And the more you read, the more you see there's nothing behind the eyes of these people. Yeah, like, you know, that, when you look that, at someone when, when, when and just, it's just when it appears a generosity. Over. Yes. When it appears a generosity at first, it just slowly slips away. It's like, you weren't generous about this. You didn't mean any of it. You're covering your mm -hmm. ass. That's all this is. Yeah. CYA. Um, yeah, so we kind of covered this. We'll go to the next one. Um, so this was actually from a CG, uh, a CG -er. uh, this is John Malin. He says, man, if I blew my brains out, maybe Gary from Nerdrotic and yellow flash would finally express outrage for C2E2 canceling us. Like the whisper network canceled Ed Piscor. Um, now I've, stated to you guys in chat, you guys obviously know me. Um, I'm a Christian conservative. I support, uh, some of the comics, some of the individuals in comics gate. Um, this is so tone deaf and just not the time, right. To make yeah. something about yourself during, especially during this week, even for people who like John Malin, even they were like, dude, not now. Like, figure like this is not the time right yeah for me this puts Malin in the same you know boat as the, as the other people that are you know uh, calling out the oh this isn't a time for mob mentality or you know red mm. flags mob. I, it, it's it's just as egregious just on a different level uh it's just another way of showing a lack of humanity 
Um, you know, and, and the fact that it's over something is, and look, there are plenty of conversations to be made about what's going on at C2E2 and them not accepting people in and they're sure. valid conversations, but to try to take that conversation and tie it into someone taking their own life, it, it's, it's not the same thing. Yeah. There's a lack of tact there. And the, yeah. and, and I've had people come into the comments of my stream upset because I said that about Malin, but seriously, dude, just like be better. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, don't do the be better center. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, sorry. <laughs> no, be, be better. But, but I, be better. Be, I know. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah. No, but no, I mean, and, and here's the thing. I agree. I agree that C2E2 should not have canceled John Malin, Ethan Van Skyver, Shane Davis, Anna, that Star Wars girl. They should not have canceled those guys. That shit is awful, awful enough that we talked about it on our live stream last week and we yep. spoke about it. Yep. However, that does not mean that those are equal, that we can equate the two together with the man's death, right? So it's this also was just lacking tact, like you said, yeah. Right, yeah. And I also said, you know, there's a difference between cancel culture and, and consequences. And, you know, I, I mentioned that I think cancel culture is where you try to rally people to stop someone or something. Uh, consequences for me in this case is, John Malin said this, so I am less inclined to support him being at C2E2 because mm -hmm. I think it was a, you know, uh, a just a distasteful comment to make. Sure. And yeah. to me, that is a, a, uh, a, con uh, a direct consequence of a direct action. Correct. Uh, David, I agree with this. And this is actually something that I said when was a Tuesday, I think. I think, I, uh, yeah, I think I, I mentioned this Tuesday. I put a post out on my Twitter. You guys can see it, but I basically said, there's going to be a lot of finger pointing and there's going to be a lot of civil war and Hey, I've done it myself, right? Like I'm absolutely guilty of pointing fingers and, and, and trying to say it's this person, it's that person. We need to hold this person accountable, but ultimately you're right. In the end, um, as someone who is, is uh, a Christ follower and someone who needs to trust that God's will is perfect. Um, I need to know, I have to understand and trust and know that at the end of the day, those who are guilty will be held accountable and that God's righteousness is more powerful than anything that I will ever do on this earth. Right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, so, yeah, that's that's Malin. But go ahead, Drew. I just I, so salty, uh, or, but, sorry, you know, sorry. what happened with C2E2 is an extension of the same cancel culture attacks that started years ago. It's relevant. I agree that it's relevant. My point is. It's not in good taste and it's not tactful to make a joke like that at a dead guy's expense. Like it had had Malin said this is the same, you know, undertones and same right. people doing the same work that's keeping us from doing our jobs. I would have been absolutely you're correct. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he's pulling out like, well, maybe if I blow my brains out, like, mm, I, I don't know. We're For far. me, that just far. rubs me the wrong way blow yeah. my brains out is such an antagonistic like he could have said anything there yeah. and to say to blow the brat the back of my brains out just wrong time wrong place um thank you cajun enjoy the rest of your night brother thank you for being here so this was uh ethan says comics sjw's are in panic mode and they've got their talking points together people who victim blame quote unquote won't be tolerated uh, and blaming the comics mob that drove Ed Piscor to his death also makes you an unsafe person. Um, so this was kind of talking about that whole group of, of individuals. Renfamous um, is one of the, if people aren't familiar with her, Renfamous goes back all the way to about 2017, 2018. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She had, oh yeah. yeah. She had the back. Joe Quesada had her back. That, that's on the record. She had her, he had her back and she was going full board against anyone and everyone and yeah. it, she hasn't stopped and clearly she is st still going and it, she won't she won't stop i think i've got where are her tweets yep here they are we'll, we'll talk about this right after blurred blurred without fear is an exceptional x man this is his, is his uh, twitter bio uh he his for some reason, he has uh, your blocked as a kind of trophy of uh, that's his background, you know, to his Twitter account. 
on his uh, bio, he puts cancel pig. Got a pretty oh, big following God. on YouTube. Um, but not, not even joking. He really is. But yes. Oh yeah. March 25th. Yeah. So this is before Piscor's death, but I think after the allegations, he says, so Ed Pisker is a sexual predator. No, 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 he is not. But everyone wanted him to be. He says, surprise, surprise. Hope they nail his ass to the wall. Probably won't, but one can dream. Um, this individual says, you have a very broad definition of sexual predator. This guy says, groomer is as groomer does. Uh, then he says, this is, oh, this doesn't have a date to it. If, quote unquote, it is true that Ed Piscor committed suicide, I feel sorry for his family, but feel sorry for him? No. So these are, these are like, these are individuals with large followings that revel, that love the fact that they are called cancel pigs, that love the fact that they are out there destroying people, like destroying people's lives. Like he's happy. He is thankful that Ed took his life. So much so that he put a gif of it making a joke. Yeah. It's you like, know, Max, you, what, what, what separates, what, what separates us from them is, is that, you know, I'm not going to say like, you know, I, I hate to I'm not going to keep bringing up your morality, strong moral centers and everything, but it's the fact that you and I, we don't hate this person. We feel sad for this person. We feel sad about this. It's like, it, it just, I feel disappointed in this because as, as humans, just, you, we should be acting. There's ways to act in, in a society and this is not a way to do it. This is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and since he's on screen, I, I look. I'm, I have my thoughts on Ethan Van Skyer. I'll put that out there, oh, but sure. I will use him in, as an example. Before Ed took his life, Ethan was doing what Ethan does, and you know Absolutely. he was covering the topic and Ethan's own way of covering the topic. If you know Ethan, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but the moment, the moment that suicide note was posted to Facebook, Ethan stopped. Mm -hmm. And Ethan was taking it very seriously of like, oh, someone needs to contact him. Someone needs to do a wellness check. Uh, I'm hearing he's missing. It, like he started taking it seriously. And, you know, I get that people can say, hey, well, you're a part of the problem. But it's also the way you react. Uh, I, I think in the wake of learning someone potentially has died or has taken their life. And the fact that he did have enough humanity. And, and I think it's fair to say that Ethan's probably not, wasn't the biggest fan of Ed and vice versa. No, but not at all. he had enough Both humanity to there, yeah. stop and go, mm -hmm. someone needs to check on him. Uh, yes. Because, because Ethan is a human being. Ethan has a heart correct. and a conscience. He, he took correct. that because he, I mean, look, I mean, I hate to bring it up again, but he comes from a religious family. He comes from a religious background and that aspect in him knew just like something is wrong here. Someone needs to reach out to him. He, he just knew he had, he just knew there was something that needed to be done. And Ethan, you know, he's got an ego. He will even say it himself. He's got the biggest ego in the world. He's the human sunbeam, right? He's, he's got an ego, Yes. but even on his live streams and I've been watching his most recent ones, he has said, I absolutely said some bad things about Ed Piscor. I said he tried to cancel because Ed Piscor hated uh, EVS. EVS hated Ed, like you said, Josh. Um, but EVS has the conscience, conscience and the wherewithal to at least have some sort of, uh, uh, um, not, not pity, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like understanding. Because even after he was like, I don't like Ed, I, I don't think that he's a good person. Even he still recognized this is an awful situation, you mm -hmm. know? And I think even for people who are like, I hated Ed, he was a cancel pig. He never liked, you know, comics gate, whatever. There's still a level of humanity that comes with like, listen, the dude just took his life. All right. Yeah. It, it would be like, you know, I, I can't stand Mark Brooks. I can't stand Tom, Tom King or Tom Taylor. Um, you know, I, I think that a lot of these people, online are just vile and, and vicious and, and really cruel. Um, if, if I were to hear that they had ended their life, I would stop all operations and I would be just as devastated. Um, yeah. if, if a cancel mob had, had led them to those actions, um, it, it's, it's not good for anyone, but, um, I was going to say, uh, so this was, so, uh, war, 
Warlion to Nas Warlion. Warlion says, "Can I DM you a discourse I had with Blurred without uh, with or with Blurred about Piscor? Um, you know, Warlion, I, I really appreciate you uh, asking. Um, you you can if you'd like on Twitter. Um, I, I may have to read it before I, I put it up on online. I, I don't really want to be sharing anyone's DMs. Um, and, and I think honestly, what we have here is telling enough, right?" You know, from his actions, we can we can understand the type of person that this man is. Um, he's not a man at all. And uh, but hey, Warline, so, I really appreciate you at least trying to reach out, you know, and trying to have a conversation to think rationally. So you know, I would like to think I can judge, you know, the character of a person easily. And this is this is an individual I would never trust anything with. Anything, nothing. I couldn't trust this individual to pick me up at the airport, to to go visit someone if they were sick or something. I could never trust this person doing it. it just they're not a human being. Hmm. Yeah. Um, J.K. says, I, "I don't want. I guess I don't want to be a warrior for the world. I'd rather be a slave to Christ." Um, J.K., you know, I think those can be two and the same. Uh, I think that if we kind of get black pilled on the world, um, then we're not doing God's work, and and we're not trying to. In the Lord's Prayer, He says, "Let let Your will be done on earth as it is as it is in heaven." We can be vessels. We can be light to people. Um, so we can be a slave to Christ and also be a warrior in the world. Um, so I, I don't necessarily want to just kind of give up and lay down and say, "Well, it's over," right? Because what are we doing as good shepherds of the kingdom of heaven? Um, so I, I think that's one thing I would I would say to that. But I love your sentiment of being a slave to Christ because yeah. he, he's our and, ultimate, and, he's everything. Right. So, yeah. Yes. And I, and I really truly think with that aspect, if, if, some, if, I shouldn't say if, but when something does happen again, I, I really feel like it, it should be on me or us or anyone to really reach out to these individuals who have been accused of something and just tell them, no, Hey, this is not the end. You know, there is, there yeah. is redemption. Regardless of what anyone says to you, there is redemption. Yeah. For everyone, look at uh, one yeah. of my favorite um, individuals in the Bible, St. Paul. Uh, or was it Paul or Matthew? Um, I think Matthew was a tax collector, which in during that day was seen as one of the most vile, evil things you could do. Look at Paul. Paul was murdering Christians. Like, taking the lives of Christians because he felt that was justified. Um, Matthew, a tax collector, taking, you know, a, a government toll from people and him willingly signing up to do so. These are, Matthew and, and Paul are probably one of the most, some of the most influential people in the Bible, at least from when, whenever I read scripture. And these are some of the most heinous men that ever lived during that time. Um, there is redemption, especially for them. And, and those are stories of men that we can become as well with, with redemption. So, um, yeah, absolutely. JK, we, we should not be conformed to the world, right. Uh, or anything in the world, the, the, uh, sins of the flesh, the, you know, and it, it goes on, it has a full list. Um, but I, I do think that, um, we can still live in the world to, um, we can live in the world, but not be conformed to it. Um, we won't serve two, two masters. We can't serve both God and money or both God and the world. Um, but we can be good stewards of the thing that he has given us, which is earth. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, thank you so much, Jay. I really appreciate that. Yes, Paul absolutely suffered after his conversion. Um, was it Paul who was crucified upside down? I, I believe um, so. Yeah. I think that's what that was. So this is from another individual. Um, once again, very controversial here on Twitter. So I won't speak about the person who, who posted this, but I will say that these are, these are the Alex DeCampi allegations for Ed. So... Seven days ago, Alex DeCampi posts, Pisker's sock puppet account, quote unquote, is posting through it by telling everyone it's all fine because the Pennsylvania age of consent is 16. And now apparently his, he's queer bashing his critics. 
And this is what cancel pigs like to do. This is what cancel culture is about. It's not good enough just because they're a groomer, a creep, a pedophile, a sexual predator, a rapist. They also have to be homophobic, uh, misogynistic, sexist, um, racist, Nazi, white supremacist. They have to be everything. They have to be labeled it all. It's never good enough for these people just to be labeled as one thing. They have to find you as everything. So Alex DeCampi here is now saying he's queer bashing his critics. Local white man super into hip hop isn't actually down with marginalized identities. Shocker. More news at 11. Oh, he just started following EVS and Babylon Beer. Babylon B. Here we go. Sure enough to find wait, out. Wait, wait. So hold on. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Max. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm not on Twitter. So you're able to see when someone begins following someone else on Twitter. Yeah. You yeah. would think wow. that they follow each other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and they're claiming that this this account, this Turketa account, is, is actually Ed, when clearly it was not. And yeah, so here's the here's the quote unquote burner account. Uh, Turketa, you see the name up here, and clearly Alex DeCampi says at Turketa. So th this is the same exact account spelled exactly. This is the one that she was trying to call out. And Turketa says, still think I'm Ed's burner account? RIP. And post a picture of her. So um, Alex was uh, wrong in this case. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And did she, oh, oh, and did she ever admit she was wrong? No. And no, and nor did she Shocking. ever apologize. And was Shocking. taking... Yeah, was taking like multiple screenshots, doing like pic collages of of that Turkata account responding to stuff, mm -hmm. and just like slandering the hell out of that account. And here's the uh, here's the uh, paragraph in Ed's will and testament, just to kind of really put a bow on this thing and just solidify. These are the people, Alex DeCampi, right here mentions it in his last will and testament. So it is, you know, the, the receipts are here. It's just, it's so sad to look at all this. Here we go. Here's uh, Renthemis. Um, for those of you who don't know, she's been part of this whole Twitter mob mentality for years now. I think you guys said, um, I, I yes. want to say, no. did she research or did she surface during uh, Gamergate, or was she always comics? I think she was always comics I th because yeah. I think she was she was always going after Richard and EBS. Okay. Yeah. So this individual says this was April third, not even two days after Ed's uh, suicide. She says, "Yeah, I don't care. I'll say it." Drawing tribute art for a guy who sexually harassed a woman and then called her big titty in his suicide note is fucking weird. And if we remember when we read Ed's suicide note, it was a consensual meeting between him and his at the time, maybe girlfriend or hookup partner, or he just loved drawing her. That was not sexual harassment. He was Correct. drawing her and she was consensually agreeing to that you know, company. So she then goes on to say he admitted to it also in the suicide note. And then she goes on. Um, was it here? Pisker admitted he was DMing a girl who he knew was underage and what he knew it was wrong. He admitted he had sex with the woman who accused him of offering industry contacts for sex. And he admitted to asking a woman for nudes. So these are all th these these people are taking this and trying to make it a guilty admission on his part instead of a suicide note. Renfamous responds, the woman I'm talking about, he has to come back to his house so he could draw her naked and offered industry contacts in exchange, which we now know is a lie because Ed said that that never happened. That's harassment and degrading. And then this one there, this individual says, yeah, the fact that he seems to be reveling in it in his Facebook posts. Yeah, of course, I asked the big titty tattoo girl to pose for me nude was illustrative to me how dismissive he was to the harm he had caused and why he was being criticized online. And Renfamous says, thank you. It, it, uh, 
I'm at a loss for words. Uh, sir, mm -hmm. Just as a human being, I am. A, I am just shocked. But I just literally, this. I mean, I equate this to being in a crowded theater and yelling fire. This is what this is. It's like they're still trying to kill him. He's yes, already absolutely. Dead. Yes, I mean these. I mean, even people who are, who have been dead for years, there are people who are going over them, trying to trample on their graves. Yeah, they, like right. you said, Max, they will not stop. It's right. it's yeah. not even a matter of still trying to kill them. It's a matter of they're trying to save themselves. I mean, that is very clearly they are trying mm -hmm. to justify what they've mm -hmm. done by mm -hmm. giving some shitty example or excuse uh, to to make it seem like they have they have a right to have said what they've said. Um, I, I think it's, it's awful. And the fact that they're saying he's admitted to these things for me personally, I, he, did he admit to drawing people naked? Yep. Yeah, but they also mm -hmm. showed up to his place for him to draw them naked. Uh, yeah. you know, if you go, it, it, there are colleges all around this, uh, this, you know, country where if you're in an art class, you will have nude models in that art class. Bullseye, Josh. Bullseye. Is that is that sexual harassment? I don't think so. Uh, you know, the people that are there are choosing to be there. The model that is there is choosing to be there. They are making choices. Now, if that model suddenly decides they want to change the uh, the scope of their uh, consent because they don't like the optics moving forward, that's on them. That's not on the artist. Right. New well models goes goes back centuries. This is not yeah. a yeah. new con new daring, bold, strange born concept rhythm yeah. is lying and she knows that she's lying and that is bad faith yes. <laughs> which we've as spoken about ab nauseum on this stream you know but or not this particular one but this channel uh jack this is this is everything right here man this is how i feel immensely i love comics from manga to political cartoons to graphic novels and i am ashamed at the horrible people now in charge of the industry. It, Same. I work it, it, I work in this I work in this industry now. I work in it. And it's yeah. like it, it, knowing the people who are in charge, I would I, like with Aaron, the Marvel, DC, and all that, those are gone. Those days are gone. Those companies yeah. we wanted to work for are gone. I would never want to work for these scumbags. Deplorable individuals. And they all support individuals like Rentman. Yeah. It, oh, it's it's heinous, dude. It's hideous. Hideous. And, and it has, it, we, we always talk about redemption. I don't know about the comic book industry. Like I, I want to be optimistic, but at this point it is now, it's now claimed a life. Do you come back from that? What, what functioning healthy industry ever talks like this has these people has, has, has this culture. Like, there's no functioning industry in in the entire world. I feel like that that has this and and survives. Um, uh, honestly, Max, at this at this point after this week, it would take a billionaire like an Elon Musk coming in, doing a full aliens nuke the site from orbit, mm, just to make sure, yeah. getting rid of everyone, bringing in a whole yeah. new crew who want to make money, who want to make a successful business, and not play politics. Yeah. Who, who just want to make art, just want to make good yeah. art, just want to tell good stories. Like it's, you know, they, the money's there with Disney and whatever. And, and if Elon buys it, sure, there's money there with Elon, but we just need people to want to tell good stories and, and don't want to antagonize fans and don't want to ruin legacy characters and don't want to shove, you know, whatever, like it, there's a whole list, but like you said, Drew, it starts from the top and it needs to be cleaned house. But um, um real quick oh, back, it, i'll just yeah I, I won't i won't pull it up because i blurred didn't do full responses but war sent me the message mm -hmm. he was talking about and he pretty much called him out and said what happened uh you mm -hmm. know to, to innocent until proven guilty and blurred's response was in a courtroom sure and what? it's like <laughs> what? <I'm just> like, <laughs> like but I mean, in, in, you know, war came back with giving examples of like, no, here too and stuff, but it, Blur didn't respond to war after that. And it's just kind of like, dude, do you know? I, I mean, I guess at that point he's saying, well, no, we get to pick and choose when it's actually going to go to court and this isn't going to go to court. I, again, we can't play judge, jury, and executioner on everything. Like yeah. we, we need to learn to let the law run its course. 
And uh, yes, just and what we've seen, people... Ed is guilty of nothing. It's, uh, in yeah. the court of law, oh, yeah. Ed is guilty of nothing. Absolutely. And yeah. and we talked about this uh, pretty much since the beginning. And, it, and like, if you want to f- have issue with what he did or how he did it, you have that right. Like, sure. uh, no one's going to stop you. But when we come down to uh, if something is legal or illegal, from what we've seen, he hasn't done anything illegal or he didn't do anything illegal. Uh, mm-hmm. And in that same respect, even if you disagree with what he did, which, again, you have that right to what you shouldn't do. And I don't think you do have the right to do is try to turn everyone else against him because you personally feel that way. Like you don't like Absolutely. it. Move on. Yeah. Um, Mob justice. And it, it took a life. Um, here is once again, Alex DeCampi. This was posted by Thor Odinson. Thor Odinson is a, I mean, th- this dude is a culture warrior um, to the last. He is extremely passionate about comics, Warhammer. This dude saves every screenshot, saves every conversation. He's on top of a lot of this stuff and and calls it out for what it is. And I respect a lot of what he does. But uh, he posts this. He says, Ed Piscor is dead, but the mur- this murderous piece of shit made herself out to be the victim in this situation. He, uh, he tags Jim Lee, Joe Quesada, C.B. Sabolsky, Tom Brevoort. He says, you enabled this toxic garbage in the mainstream comic industry for years. This is what Alex DeCampi has true. to say. Yeah. 100% true. She says, also, every big name white comics guy who follows me, this is what happens when you don't stand up for marginalized people in your industry. We, as in me, Alex DeCampi, and women and people of color, deal with this shit constantly and you can't be bothered to say, hey, maybe stop attacking female people of color and or queer creators. Alex, a man is dead because of you. Like he's not on this earth anymore. And you are going to say that you are the victim. Now, I would like to see, uh, you know, and here, here's the thing that I don't want to actually say, but at the same time, you have to ask the question, how many people has this SJW cancel, cancel mob, cancel culture, um, how many people have they killed at Piscor? We can absolutely say, you know, uh, aided in the in the in the taking of his life, right? And we could guarantee you, Warren Ellis would have been another one if Warren Ellis had been a, a bit weaker, like yeah. Ed. Warren definitely would have killed himself. But like I said at the beginning when I jumped on Max, if Ed had lived, Alex and everyone else would be like, no, that's not good enough for forgiveness. We got stipulations for you. It's it's shakedown mm. time. This is what you got to right. do. It's going to be that 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 the whole list of things of every obscure, wild, dumb suggestion that we need you to do for us. It's like, what, what the hell is going on here? And it's a shame. That's all they want. And like you said, even with those stipulations, that that was never going to be enough. It's never enough for these people. They are still adjusting it for Warren Ellis. They're still Mm -hmm. changing. They're still shifting that goalpost. It's never, like you said, it's never enough. Yeah. Um, and thank you, Warline, for the uh, topic. Yeah, I'm sorry, brother. I just uh, I, I love that you are part of this conversation, and and I'm I'm thankful that uh, you actually called some of these people out, right? And yeah. and that's what I think we need to do. Um, but Josh is right. Uh, just due to the um, timing of the live stream and and some of the topics we want to discuss, I think it might just be easier that we kind of talk about it um, openly like this. So. Um, but yes, the, the, George, absolutely. They wanted to kill Warren Ellis, Jason Latour, Brian Wood. Yep. They want scalps. They want these things hung up in their homes, you know, but. And I'll and even say, they, they, you know, we kind of mentioned earlier, it's never enough for them. It's never enough. And I think Warren Ellis is a prime example of it's never enough because mm-hmm. they came to the table. Like it's been a year's worth of demands of what they expect to see before they're going to, you know, allow him back or forgive him or whatever the fuck they were saying um and that's he's just pretty it, much done. It, there's no forgiveness they're gonna keep yeah, saying he's, it no forgiveness he's pretty much done everything that they which i i 
applaud him for doing i would not have done it but he's pretty much done everything that they said they wanted to see him do and then every year it's just new stipulations and new stipulations and like it's never enough these these people don't want you active that's that's what it is and and just a reminder every woman that warren ellis slept with at least from what we can tell and from what the woman said it was all consensual and none of them were underage yeah. I mean, am, am I am I right or am I wrong? Like, you're right. You're right. And, and, you're right. And not only that, match, that they when were <laughs> sending like booby pics in these like uh, <laughs> message I'm, boards yes, to get I'm his sorry. attention. Yeah. Yes. So and, like, and one of them accused I, him yeah. of a, a hypnosis. He was accused of hypnotizing them. Oh yeah, that's just in. It's, it's it's there. It's documented. <sighs> that's true. Max, yeah. I'm. I'm going to send you nudes. Okay. But it doesn't mean I want to like, <laughs> if, if you come on to me, you're being a, a you know, a dirty dog and so and you need to go check yourself. So we're going to, yeah. So Josh is going to send nudes and he's going to be like, you want to be on like this big live stream, right? Well, I know some people, you know, and we'll, we'll have a mutual thing. Right. But then I'm going to make stipulations for you later on in your career. And I'm gonna yeah. Yeah. Them, don't, so. don't come knocking on my, my uh, bedroom door. No, no, no. My no. hotel room door in Vegas, you sex pest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, that is coming up in a few days. So, like, don't tempt me. But, uh, well, there you have it. Like, th this is, this is, this is literally, we're in the same week that Ed took his life. And, and this vile, cruel cockroach. I, can you even consider someone like this a human being? No. I, I, this no. Is, these are the people who, like I was saying earlier, you meet them and there's nothing behind the eyes. There's just there's just nothing. It is just empty, void, nothingness, blackness. There's just absolutely no soul there. Um, it's someone it's, who wants yeah. to have one up on you. Someone who yep. wants power for you. That's all they're yeah. about. Uh, we deal with this. We deal with this constantly. Okay. Yeah. We we deal with this constantly. You can't be bothered to say, "Hey, maybe stop attacking female POC." And you know what? What what is sad? Once again, this doesn't help their cause. Like mm -mm. women who feel attacked, people of color who feel discriminated against, queer creators or or uh, creators in the LGBTQ or, or who are homosexual, this doesn't help their cause. They're probably like, "Alex, shut the fuck up." Right. Like I would if I were someone in comics that were part, part of any one of those communities, I'd be like, she does not represent me or my ideas. I Yeah, this is not this is not the time or place or, or just any you, you don't say this shit at any any time. Look, um, as as someone who falls into one of these descriptors at the bottom, mm -hmm. I'll, I will say this. Now, compared to 15 to 20 years ago, I feel like these groups are getting handouts. I feel like I would be getting handouts uh, because of, of who I am. Uh, you know, Josh, I, you would I, have I, a Batman I, miniseries right now at DC. If uh, you hadn't pissed absolutely. off Scott Snyder, you'd have a absolutely. miniseries. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're probably not wrong. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, um, yes, Salty, I am a POC. I am an albino. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it's it's wild um but yeah no it's 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 wild how the professional victim blaming is like uh robert meyer burnett actually mentioned this no it yeah. wasn't on this one but he mentioned um he mentioned it earlier on his stream he was like these people have never actually experienced what true victimhood is when you speak to a woman who has been in his scenario, he mentioned a woman who he knew that was raped when she was 12. And that continued until she was 16 by the man who was dating the mother. And that woman now has a beautiful life and, and a beautiful family and had to recover from that. These people will never know that type of victimhood or, or, or suffering or what it actually means to be a victim to someone with that power. And I'm not saying that, you know, Oh, her, you know, I'm not trying to judge and say that her victim, her being a victim is more than this person's victimhood, right? But I'm saying that to you, to weaponize your victimhood, to try and make yourself a professional victim, 
that's gross. That's really, really gross and disgusting. Yeah. But yeah. It's also this weird thing. And, and I've seen this with people outside of the comics industry. Um, I will say this, you know, we, we kind of referenced the, the Corey Cajun Corey incident, but there are people there that they live in this uh, state that was created by fear mongering that all these people are out to get you. All these guys are going to, you know, assault you. Oh, it's, it's happening all the time. It's so prevalent that they are convinced that if they see any inkling of what might be there or look that way, that it's it's definitely what's going on. If 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 you know you come into my job and you say, hey, you look really nice today, you are clearly a sexual deviant and you're trying to harass me. Like you all you want is to to hook up with me and someone needs to do something about that. And like that shit gets on my nerves. The fact that they have created this false narrative and convinced themselves that all these people are going after them, like it's fucking insane it is absolutely insane and these people they need to get help i because even looking at that last post from de campy i'm sitting here going like what the fuck is wrong with you like what just just stop like please for the love of god just stop stop talking stop making accusations stop making this about you just stop yeah and on top of that josh i mean max brought it up earlier it's like if i had a I shouldn't, I hate saying this, but when I was in my military days, I, there was a, I had a, an airman that I was a supervisor for, and there were a lot of characteristics and traits that really reminded me of Alex Campy here to the fact that like, I, you could not have a conversation with this person by yourself. You had to have someone else and maybe another person as well there as well to make sure nothing got misconstrued. Nothing was taken out of context that everyone understood. Everyone knew what was said. Like I, if, 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 if I would ever to be in the same room as Alex DeCampi, I'm making sure as hell another person and another person is in that room to make sure nothing is taken out of context. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you can, it's not like, oh, you can never be too careful. Now it's like, you need a lawyer. You need like three women and two men. Like You need, yeah, it's just, it's, oh, you have and, to be oh, oh. really... Well, you just reminded me, Max, I was going to bring this up earlier. Uh, former Vice President uh, Mike Pence, he gave an interview saying that uh, he always had his wife there with him at dinners with like, another woman, you know, to make sure, you know, this everything was on the level and everything, just uh, nothing was taken out of context. And he was automatically called a creep, a pest, a sexual, like uh, a raper, it's all this stuff because of that. It's like, no, this is, it's, it's shit like this that shows why he had his wife there because no, he didn't want anything taken out of context. Not because he's a yep. fucking creep, but because he doesn't want anything to be taken out of context. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jack says, Josh, you were entirely too reasonable. I think it's time you've been canceled or you were canceled. So <laughs> I, you I, I, I will add, I, I will say, I'm going to add something personal to this conversation because I think some people could hear some of the things I've said tonight and go, oh, this guy never supports women or even take, you know, my personal history of things and the fact that I brought up the Corey situation, say this guy never supports women. I want to make something very clear. Uh, my cousin, who was a female, uh, made allegations against someone, uh, her husband, for things that he was doing to her. They were true. There was court evidence that it was true. And you know what happened to her because of it? She was murdered by her ex-husband. So when I sit here and I come to these things and I have these conversations, if your presumption is that I don't support women or I don't trust women, you're very much in the wrong. However, I'm going to look at things, you know, to a pretty broad extent to try to gather facts before I speak uh, or at least assess the situation to the best of my knowledge. Um, so if anyone is having a takeaway that I don't support women, like fuck off, carry on. Sorry. Whew. Yeah, that's dude. That is so heavy. Um, and thank you for, I mean, thank you for sharing that. I don't think anyone for a second would not believe you. Right. Um, but, uh, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say that it is the internet. It is the internet. So. I was about to say, we have a whole horde of people in a certain group that I will not name that are very quick to say I support sexual harassment. So Yeah, that's true. Well, listen, I will not speak for these two gentlemen. I, I, I cannot speak for Drew. I cannot speak for Josh. But uh, this is kind of my take on it. Yeah, I kind of hate women, though. Oh, uh, yeah. I there you go. Um, my take. That's, that's fair. Yeah. In this day and age, it's kind of fair, honestly. 
no, it's obviously a joke. Calm down, internet. It's a joke. We're trying to bring some levity here. But um, all right. Let's get back to uh let's get back to this. Um, we've got a few more and then we'll we'll end the night. Uh Alex DeCampi, once again. She says, and now DNI and well, she goes, uh, let's see, April 3rd, April 3rd. So this was earlier. And now D and I and a bunch of others who discuss the allegations are being subjected to like a hundred times the internet bullying Ed was. Oh, whoa. A hundred times the amount of internet bullying. Ed. So now she's comparing her, her victim status to. So Ed. now she knows. She, so she knows everything that Ed got. She knows all the messages that Ed got. I he guess so. Um, by people who have never given a single shit about Ed their entire lives before this week. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. Because a guy took his own life. (laughs) People should give a shit. That's what she doesn't understand. She doesn't understand that people should... It's not even, I mean, it is an Ed thing, but it's not even about Ed. It's about the others, the others that haven't happened yet, the others that are to come. How can we prevent this? How can we stop this? What led to this? That's the point. And she's so fucked up that she doesn't get that. I guess not, dude. And look, and this is, I don't know, this is April 3rd. It's now April 7th. This post had 116 likes. There are 116 people out there and six people out there who agreed with this and were like, yes, yes, queen. <sighs> Beats me. Uh, she goes on to say, anyway, he's fine. He's, oh, D, I think is what she's trying to say. He's fine. I'm fine. Oh, thank you, Alex. Thanks for letting us know that you're okay after torturing a man to death. Uh, you got to understand this kind of BS heat is an annual event for prominent women. Oh my, here we go again. Dude, for prominent women and people of color in comics, they'll all fuck off back to their parents' cellars in a few days. They love doing the, they love doing, oh, man, baby in the mom's basement. These people are, like, look at, this is, this is Rob Liefeld. Think he? You think he lives in his mom's basement? This is a man who is living off of multi, multi, multi million dollars. He doesn't need fucking Alex DeCampi for anything. No, and he. It, the and, other thing with Max, just like with Ethan, Max, he comes from a religious background. I believe his mm-hmm. father was a bishop or a deacon. I oh, forget really? what a deacon or a bishop. I forget. I forget what um, the nomination his family was or his dad was. But yeah, he comes from a religious background. And he has a heart. Right. He has he understands redemption and forgiveness. He comes from that background. Yeah. And uh it's it's very we can clearly see that with certain people in the, in the industry. Uh and Alex clearly does not have any of that. Hold on a second. I'm I'm sorry, Drew. I don't I don't mean to interrupt. Everyone at Pisker listed his killers were white women and people of color, but it's just a coincidence, I'm sure. Is that really what we're going with right now? Are we really saying that? Liberal Ed Piscor, who hated Comicsgate, who hated th- what conservative Christians were doing in the comics realm, are are we really saying that Ed was somehow a ist and a phobe after the man is dead? Is that really what we're doing and, right now? And, oh, I'm and, just I'm, t- I'm t- sure t- it's a coincidence. And to back you up, Max, uh, Dan Fraga, who he was, who he was close with, the minute Dan Fraga sided with. Uh, EBS, Ed, and Jim, they cut him off at the knees. They wanted nothing to do with him. Nothing to, it, it, when, when Dan Dan went to go talk to them at Heroes Con, they pushed him away. They, they said, go away. We do not want to talk to you. Dan Fraga. Dan gave yeah. him his Extreme Studios jet leather jacket. And no, we don't oh, want to wow. talk to you at all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, that That is just, that's absolutely wild that we are at a point where we're looking at the people that Ed listed and we're, we're judging them based off of their race and gender. And we're, we're trying to find other ways of labeling Ed as a, I, I don't even want to go there. Cause th- that's just, that's not the conversation, man. It's just not. So, I mean, um, it's, it's almost like they were listed because there's receipts of them leading this, like, you know, uh, torch 
this mob witch hunt. Mob. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's a witch hunt. You know, yeah. I mean, it's I, almost like they've been doing this for years to other comics. Well, that creators. as well. And then look, yeah. it, we, we keep talking about how they've been doing it for years, but there's, there's a distinct, there was a distinct shift in the prevalence in which they were doing this stuff. Uh, you know, starting around 2015, 2016, moving forward. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Um, yeah. And if we're, if we're really being honest, like we were, we were kind of joking a little bit earlier, right? When we said, Josh, you would have your own Batman series right now. Women and people of color are getting jobs left and right in the comic book industry that they are either a not qualified for or B not just, just not ready for. Okay. But oh. let's time out. Let's, let's look at this from a le- like legitimate standpoint. We're making a joke about you saying that, but let's look at the one issue that Scott Snyder and DC had with me personally for him to say, I'll mm. never hire a guy like that. And it's because they said in a review that I wrote where I broke down story structure, I got accused of mansplaining to two female writers. And when we responded back to DC with, because they came at me with those allegations, we came back with a list of reviews written by men, predominantly white men, where I made the same, like the same arguments of why this, the book was not good, but, but to their reasoning, I'm a mansplainer. And that's why I I shouldn't be hired to do. So is it really a joke? I mean, let's be honest. Is it really a joke? Probably not. I, I don't I don't know, Josh. Sounds like you're trying to mansplain me right now. So I just kind of tuned you I out mean, while you were talking. You know about what? The Maybe. So, like, sorry. I don't know. Uh, yeah. No naming names and and actually having receipts to the people who led to this. Um, that's that's totally racist. Also. Uh, liking coffee and being late to th- or being early to things is also racist uh, to from uh, and math. Don't oh, forget math. Or... Math is racist too. Oh, in math. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Um. Well, let's get off of Alex to Camby. Let's talk about. Yeah, she's um, pissing me off. I'm sorry. I know, right? Yeah. It's like just... <laughs> I'm fuming over here. Like, yeah. I'm trying to keep it together. So this is really interesting. This is from John Ems, Emsley. I, I don't know who this person is, but I saw this on my timeline, thought it was interesting. He says, the threat of Ed Piscor or other men being quote unquote creepy is pale compared to the real threat exposed by this tragedy. The real threat is what his woman accuser and the mob of public prosecutors posed against him. Untested allegation to a morally hypersensitive community. It means the the ready betrayal of friends and colleagues, assured damage to profession and livelihood, and uh, psychological embarrassment and ridicule. Ed Pisker knew it. The industry he loved turned it on him, and he traded his life to shut it off. I I mean, that's a really well-spoken... Yeah, and and the other thing is, these individuals, they're not... These were not friends of his. We got... One thing that needs to be distinguished here, like there's there's uh, co-workers there's acquaintances and there's friendships i really truly believe a lot of these individuals in the industry they these were not friends of his they may have been acquaintances and co-workers at the most and he probably had very few friends who were in the industry unfortunately yeah um yeah i, I and i think that this is really interesting too is that ed grew up Bullseye. in a black community and wrote a love letter to the hip hop community and to the hip hop culture that he loved vehemently. Right. Um, so it was a bestseller. It it was very popular. It was a, it it sold, sold, sold very well. I would argue he's more known for hip hop family tree than he is X-Men grand design. Most likely. Yeah, Um, I would agree. I I will also add that, that those accusations I'm, I'm about 99% positive. The campy was making those accusations based on that Turkata account. Which we know wasn't Ed. Which was not, yeah, which was not Ed. And she was saying that that account was queer bashing and that it yeah. followed EVS and Babylon B, which yeah. Ed did not do. So, absolutely, like you said, false accusations once again. Um, so, Armando hit the nail on the head, brother. Rini draws, Rini, thank you for being here. We love seeing you and uh, we hope that, we, that you are doing well. Here, I'll, I'll move. I'll move us out. So, cause I think Josh was trying to wave at you earlier. So well, that didn't work. Um, either, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Rainey says what they put Ed through was public. Yeah. That, and that's another thing. This was public, public psychological torture. They knew what they were doing. 
But Rini, all of this was targeted. All of this was intentional. Every word, every action, intentional. Uh, they know what they're doing. Absolutely. And Rini, I'm sure that you have had to experience some of this as well. Uh, maybe not to the same extent, but I, I, I'm sure that it has not been an easy road in the comic book industry for you. Um, but Rini, we love you. Hope you're doing well. Um, it is so great to see you uh, succeeding so well with uh, 2.5. Um, and uh, we can't, can't wait to see more. So uh, let's see. <laughs> Far from race, this is a white dude you can get. Let's see. So that, that was, um, that was this, like I said, I just thought this was really well-spoken. Uh, I think this first line, the threat of Ed Pisco or other men being creepy is pale compared to the real threat exposed by this tragedy. I thought that really rang true. Mm. And I think for a lot of people is really, um, really important. Um, so that was something, um, this was kind of, so we kind of, we've talked about this before, but co cosplay is in consent. Was that kind of the the initiative that really kicked off this Me Too movement and the Believe All Women hashtag that kind of divulged into now we can really accuse men of anything and they can't, they can't really say anything back that which led then to Scott Snyder pushing that you know men in comics say no right we saw that pledge a couple of years back where it was like these are all the things that men in comics we pledge to do. Was the was the cosplay is in consent thing? Was that kind of where it all started? Uh, it was the Me Too movement started? It was much bigger and started a little bit before that. But that's I true. Th yeah. I think the cosplay isn't consent. And Drew, you might need to correct me if I'm wrong. I think part of that kind of stemmed from the whole um, uh, Scott Lobdell situation. That you know. Um, I, I mean, in general, I, I think I don't even think it's a specific thing. I think there are cosplayers that are wearing skimpy outfits and get mad if you want from me describing it that way. But people were touching them, maybe some of them inappropriately, maybe some of them just touching to take a picture uh, and they had issues with it. But I I don't it's. I, yeah, I'm yeah, not sure was, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, because I really think cosplay is not consistent. I think that. That's really that's a good question because it's really hard to tell pinpoint when that really started in the industry. But yeah, um, it may have been Scott, uh, but mm -hmm. I I I do know it was coming up that you know just cosplayers weren't happy with people coming up to get photos, you know, putting their hands around the cosplayers, you know, uh, hugging them, just and some freaked out about it, but, which is under. But we, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not really 100 percent sure when that started. Unfortunately, yeah. but it's, it's, I need to research that really when that started. Yeah, it should be on the document of a downfall. I wonder if that's on there. Um, the next thing here is Villa Lobos. For those of you who don't know, Villa Lobos is also a comic book creator. Um, oh, real oh. quick before we change, oh, I, yeah. I so I just looked it up. So cosplay is not consent started in 2013. Uh, oh wow! But the 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 harassment of cosplayers includes photography without permission. What I'm sorry, what? Yeah, <laughs> verbal abuse, touching and groping. Like, look, touching and groping. Like, control yourself, yeah, people. Don't okay? do that. You know? shit. be regular people. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, verbal abuse. I, again, depending on what was said, you know, if someone said, "Oh my god." Are, are they talking about your boobs or are they talking about how good the cosplay is? You don't know. But the whole mm. photography without permission, you're at a you're at a public venue where people have cameras ready. They're coming in to see cool shit. And oh, my God, they took a picture of you without asking you as you stand and or walk through a hallway with thousands of people. Fucking get over yourself. Yeah, block and not just that, blocking traffic in aisleways in a convention center, which pisses off guys like me to no end when I got working. Yeah. yeah. Just like, there yeah. are yeah. there are men and women who spend years uh perfecting and creating their cosplay outfit or their costume or whatever, and then they go to this con and they want everyone to look at them. Trust me. They want to be the star of the show. They are, you know, uh, content creators and they're this and that. They've gotten only fans maybe. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> these it's people want to be seen. 
Yeah, that's that's what they're there for. A lot of them aren't even fucking geeks and nerds. They're just fake geek people, and it you know. But so I I have an issue with cosplay. What it's become. It used to be super cool, and now it's just become yeah. Um, we've got Aaron Sparrow in the chat. He says Villa Lobos is hateful, petty, jealous, morbidly obese, shut in. Couldn't have said it better myself, Aaron. Um, which leads us actually to a good segue here. This is Villa Lobos's response, and if you guys remember, in Ed's initial, um, uh, in his last words, in his statement, he mentions Villa Lobos by name. So he says, "I don't even know what to say. My heart goes out to Ed Pisker's family and friends. This is not me being hip- uh, hypocritical to trying to backtrack on the posts I made that were critical of Piscor in the past. It is my belief that when you believe someone is a bad actor, you should call them out." The fact is there were unsavory allegations about Ed Piscor that were preceded by rumors that he was unsafe and predatory to women in the comic scene. So far, it seems fairly genuine. Where I have the problem is the white knighting. So we're about to see uh, Villa Lobos become the the gatekeeper of women and the white knight of the uh, women in comics. He says in this letter, Piscor said, In his letter, Piscor said that he was innocent and that there was a missing context that if shared would exonerate him. I wish he would have made that case and acknowledged that his experience may not have aligned with the experience of the women he spoke out against him. He could have acknowledged his faults and promised to do better. And I'm sure most people would have given him the opportunity to prove he was capable of growth. (laughs) Bullshit. Uh, Bullshit. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's like he, he can go fuck himself. He is full of shit when he says that. He, he knew once you're canceled, you're done. There's no coming back from it. We'll never know, though, because Ed has chosen another route, and it's heartbreaking. I hate this was the choice he made. Uh, even though Ed Piscor considered me be part of a mob to take out away comics, the only thing he loved, that was obviously not my intention. It was your intention. To cancel someone is to remove them from comics. Is to, to, remo- is to remove their to, livelihood, yeah. To remove them from the tribe, to, exo- to kick them out of the tribe. They are, yeah. Yeah. It's on an ungrado. And this is where... The white knighting comes in. My intention was to make the thing he loved accessible to women who have far too often been vi- been victimized by men in this business. But my intention doesn't matter. He was clearly in a headspace where he felt like that uh, w- that was the case. But I can, from the bottom of my heart, say that I wish this wasn't how the story ended. His friends, family, and fans deserve to see him make an ex- an attempt to live up to the man. They believed him to be. Oh, that's so angering, man. They, they lived up to the man they believed him to be. Villa Lobos, you didn't give him that chance. You didn't even believe that he could live up to the man that he was going to be because you wanted to protect the space for the women, protect the space from all the whamons. You didn't give him that chance. I don't know. What do you guys think about Villa Lobos's response? I think it's just pandering and meandering. He, he is he is completely full of shit. The, uh, just everything yeah. he just said. He is completely full of shit. He does not feel sorry for his family. He is covering his ass. And th- like you said, Max, we've said it before. We're saying it again. There was no redemption for him. If there's no redemption for Warren Ellis to this day, there's going to be no, re- no redemption for Ed. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, if... <sighs> It, it will. I, I sound like a broken record, but it will never be good enough. That that should be no, the name of the street. It will never be good enough, right? It, 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 I mean, we are not saying it enough, Max. I mean, we feel like we are, but we're not saying enough. It is it, for the individuals like Ramon, Alex, Renfamous. It's never good enough. There is yeah. no redemption. Never redemption. There will always be. Yeah, there will always be the stipulations that you'll never be able to live up to, and all that stuff. Uh, you, what you just mentioned, it'll never be enough. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, that's the very reason I titled my video that I and I didn't come to the table for the discussion as prepared as you were. I just for me, I had to get it out because of how it was the day after I committed mm-hmm. suicide. Yeah. But I purposely titled that video: "How far is too far, and when is enough enough?" When is enough for this enough? for this very reason? Like, yeah. uh, and and the fact that I did that a day after, and then a day after my video is when all these people start posting these posts like this. Is I feel like it's just it's proving the point. Like it's proving mm. the point. 
you couldn't have labeled that stream better. Yep. When is enough enough? Um, so I think the last thing, you know, so here's and, Greg and Smallwood. As, I, I think. Uh, sorry, real quick, as ahead. long as the people in charge, like the, I think it was, it was Odin, I think it was his name. You showed his tweets earlier. Um, I forget what the yeah, guys, Odin, Odin about. Thornson or Thor yeah, Odinson. He, yeah. For what he had showed, as long as those people, the people with power are in charge and they keep, you know, giving these individuals, Ren, Rinfamous, Alex Campion, you know, a voice, a platform to, to spew their hatred and vileness, it's never going to be enough. They're always going to be in power. They're always going to have a strong voice of who is in and who isn't in the tribe. Yep. And, and it isn't, I was going to say we have Aaron joining us, but real quick, the one thing I will say too is this is part of the reason I hope some legal action is taking for what it can be taken on. Uh, just for the fact that they will hopefully start learning or start facing some consequences for their actions in this respect. And I, I think until that happens, they're going to continue to do it. The moment they realize, oh, us interfering and messing up people's lives could actually have consequences on our own lives. Maybe, mm -hmm. just maybe at that point, they'll be selfish enough to stop. Hmm. Uh, hello, Aaron. Thank you again for joining us tonight. Um, yeah, brother, we're, we are just kind of finishing up. If you see, we've been trying to get through all these tabs. Um, but I, I don't know how long you've been able to watch the stream or not, but we have long gone through be, almost long enough oh, to be furious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rightfully so. Going hey, off hey. on the, the campy comments. Oh, I, I was just, I was sitting, I was sitting there watching and I was actually like shaking. As, yeah. as you were like breaking this this all down um, because a lot of this stuff I had not seen. Oh, really? And so okay. yeah, I had not seen all of, I mean, I knew that, uh, that um, this piece of shit was, uh, and, and you know, I don't like to, I don't like to say, I don't like to say that about people. I like to think that everybody is redeemable. I like to think that, you know, everybody gets a second chance and everybody has uh, an opportunity for a, uh, for a redemption arc, but this hateful piece of shit, he has done nothing but go after this guy for years. And he's not outraged on behalf of the supposed victim. He doesn't give a shit about any of the people. You know, he doesn't give a shit about any victim out there. He is a virtue signaling slab of garbage. And, uh, you know, now he's out there trying to cover his ass. Uh, you know, well, first of all, you can't cover your ass either uh, metaphorically or literally, you fat piece of shit. You, you know, you sit there you know, on Twitter all day, you know, just this giant dollop of humanity because you're too lazy to get up and move around. And you just sit there and you obsess with people uh, about people more successful than you all day long. And then you go out and you attack them and you destroy their lives. And this is what you get. This is what happens. This is what happens, Ramon. You drove somebody to suicide. You and Alex DeCampi and all of these other just garbage human beings that just sit and can't wait to attack and excoriate somebody, you know? And granted, we all commented on the allegations as they stood. You know, we all said, well, like, if this is true, then this is how we feel. But we, you know, we're waiting for... for the, we didn't go out there on Twitter and just try and make sure that every search engine of this guy's name would always come up with accusations. And that's what these people do. They are horrible human beings. Uh, like uh, like Richard says all the time, he fought terrorists in Afghanistan and in, uh, and in Iraq. And these are the worst human beings he has ever encountered. Mm -hmm. They have dog shit for souls. Aaron, I, I feel your passion about this. I really do. And I feel your rage. And right now I'm trying to find um, what uh, you boy Zach was saying about all these guys because he's posted about Villa Lobos before and he was showing a lot of the um a lot of the receipts for what's happened uh here and with just with the situation in general but i think one one thing you said is that these these people have no souls and they will they will sit here for hours looking for ways to try and cancel these people it's like their part-time job is they will just sit here on the computer and search and search and search and search all through their Twitter history just to find one thing that could possibly be upsetting to them to where they can outrage about it. Um, and they knew, they knew that yeah. Ed, they knew that comics was everything that Ed had. They yes, knew that he yeah. lived and breathed it. Like, you know, unfortunately for Ed, he did not have a lot of other pillars in his life to, you know, that, that could hold him up. Uh, and so they wore away the one thing they had. They chipped at it. You see Villalobos just chipping away at it all week long, every day, chipping away at his friend, Jim Rugg. 
You know, if I can get Jim Rugg to denounce him, then maybe I can really break Ed. I can get this revenge for a guy who's done nothing to me except be more successful than me. You know, we talk about all the times, Josh has said it multiple times. When our friends succeed, even when people that we're just like acquaintances with that, you know, we're not like, we don't have a particularly strong feeling about one way or the other, but when they succeed, we're happy for them. We're happy to see success. These people hate it. And it is a, an affront to them. They mm -hmm. hate beauty. They hate success. They hate anybody getting anything that they don't have because they are petty and small and jealous and they are horrible. And I'm so sick of these people being in industry, in the industry. I'm so sick of people like Mark Wade going out and applauding them. Mark Wade supporting the people that drove a man mm. to suicide. And you know why? Mm. Because Mark is petty and small and Mark would love it, love it if he had the power to make somebody that he didn't like kill themselves. He would love it. And that's unfortunately, that that's why we've talked about in our chats and why we've seen a lot of people on Twitter that we, we didn't get to yet. But even they have been saying like, I need to reevaluate my place here in comics because I don't want to be here. I don't, if, if this is an industry that's going to cultivate this type of behavior, if this is an industry that's going to promote this type of behavior, like you said, like Mark Wade promoting the, these people, what, why would we ever be allow that to be acceptable in this industry? So, and, and I, so I think there's a lot of people who are now going like, is this something I can, I, I want to do. Right. So, um, yeah, the, the one thing good. I'll yeah, the one thing I'll add in to Max, and this is the unfortunate thing is this isn't just the comics industry. This is everywhere. This is film. Yeah. This is television. This is corporate America. Uh, like we're seeing this across the board. I, I think the the thing that's making this have such a ripple or such an impact in comics is because comics is so small. And in that same respect, it that's the other thing that blows my mind is that these people are doing these things in an industry that is so small, like what do you really have to gain from it? It's almost like I understand it more when it's film or I understand it more when it's corporate America because people are usually benefiting by hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. This, you're not benefiting at all. You're just ruining people's lives. And, and that that's is a benefit just, for them, Josh. Yeah, that's well, the end all I the know, like, but it's just, it's, I mean, it's despicable across the board, but this, I, it's just hard to understand and process. You want to rule comics. What if... <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, you want to you want to rule comics? What a low bar! What an absolute yeah. low bar! This is such a small industry, and you think that like because you got invited to some Wizard Worlds and you sat behind me, Alex DeCampi, that you're like some sort of celebrity and that people should like listen to you and that you know you should just get up on your soapbox and everybody should like sit down and listen to the the things that pour out of your mouth and we should treat you like you're somebody. You're nobody. You're absolutely nobody in an industry of mostly nobodies. And now, I wonder if that is the reason why a lot of them felt like they could infiltrate this and just be like, it's going to be mine now. Like this was a male dominated thing or this was a boys club. So I'm going to make it mine now. Uh, whether, They're whether the Joker in the Dark Knight. They are the Joker in the Dark Knight. And he comes and sucks to the mob. You know, it's, it's nice what you guys had, but it's all mine now. Hmm. And, and yeah, and, and that's, that's kind of, it's like when things are not as mainstream, like you said, Aaron, like the com comic industry is like a little bit smaller for it, comparatively to a lot of other hobbies or whatnot. Um, it's easy for them to infiltrate and take over. But uh, if, if they, if they were trying to do that with something else, they wouldn't get anywhere. But um, yeah, I, I could have sworn that I'm so sorry. Cause I keep looking through this. I could have sworn. I know that he did a video about it, but uh, but I know he also did like posts where he was showing receipts, like Twitter messages from years ago of Villa Lobos being like uh, Ed Piscor got in a, shit in the community in post. Post. might be in a community post, but probably not videos. It could be like well, that's, images of it. There's a lot of it. Right. There's a lot of it in the in the part two video that uh, that it looks like you haven't watched yet. Oh no! I yeah, haven't that, that, yeah. Okay. yeah, I think it dropped right when you went live, Max. The, the okay. Oh uh, well, here, yeah. Well, there you go. Here's one of them. He says Ed was kind of always been a coward, but I know when the Eric stuff went DC, when the Eric stuff went DC, asked if I'd wait for an official statement. After a few days, I said I couldn't wait. Jim really need really needlessly making himself complicit for a guy who threw him under the bus over that red room cover. Silence is complicit. Okay, first of all, Ed, uh, you know, or first of all, Ed was a coward. Uh, citation needed, Ramon. You're a coward. 
Yeah, who, wh- you're an why absolute is he, coward. Yeah. You know, you sit there on your computer, you know, talking shit that you would never talk to somebody's face because they'd knock you on your fat ass and your leg would break and gravy would pour out. You know, you're disgusting. <laughs> you are a disgusting yeah. garbage human being filled with garbage. This is what you do. You sit there on the internet and you you snipe because you would never have the balls to say something to somebody's face because they'd knock you the fuck out. I, I th- this is the reality. This is the reality of things. None of these people would say this in real life because they know they know how awful it is, but they can hide behind their screens. Um, and you know, a little, little anecdotal story. You know, I've told you guys, and I, I think some of, the, some of the people watching may know this, but like at one point a couple years ago at New York Comic Con, with Aaron, that was when we had the big Merc push at New York Comic Con. I, I had to, I had to. Chew crow, at the Chew Crow when I talked to uh, um, Shannon Mayer about his book he had done like Shadows Gate I, I had gone too far with some comments some critiques I made about his book in, in the video and I would go apologize to him and he did not expect that at all he was shocked like that I would go talk to him face to face and apologize it, granted the conversation went round and round but he, clearly that's not something that's done people admitting they were wrong and just Chew and Crow and just uh, talking things out and mm-hmm. it was it's very clear. It is not common. Here's another one. Villa Lobo says, uh, Jesus Christ, Ed is such a fucking creep. Glad the victims of his behavior feel safe enough to come forward about this. Despite some of the harassment I've already seen, Ed Pisker's audience uh, has already sent their way. This was March 25th. So this was like right when the allegation dropped, I believe. Also, um, um didn't uh, Ramon Villalobos, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't he and Tamara Bon Valane and, uh, and a couple of the other people that worked on uh, Border Town when the allegations came out about Eric Esquivel, they said that they'd always known that he had that in his past, but they'd asked him if he, you know, if he was still doing it and he said no. So they were fine with it. So like, they were like, okay, well we took him at his word, but yep. yet Ed, you know, would, would have forever been tarnished by this. And that's why he saw no way out. He knew that no matter what happened, no matter if the allegations were disproven, no matter if he sued and he won, every single time his name came up attached to something, whether it was another gallery show or it was another deal or he was getting, you know, some kind of book somewhere, they would bring this up. And yeah. they would bring it up until the day he died. Unproven Please, allegations. Just, just because... They wanted to drive this man to suicide, mm-hmm. and they they did. So, uh, yeah, because I, I really like. What other purpose do you have to harass a man this much? Like for for Via Lobos to do nothing else with his day but just to constantly harass Ed Piscor when they've had no uh, like. It, it, do they have some sort of like villain hero beef or like some sort of a uh, like? I, I I don't get the absolute disdain for ed from via lobos i I just i I just think petty jealousy that's all i think just petty jealousy there you go that yeah this guy smelled blood in the water he thought he could hurt somebody and he was excited about it he was excited at the idea that maybe a girl was victimized he was he he was he probably had a boner he was so excited that he could go on twitter and he could virtue signal and he could pretend to be this this good guy i guarantee i guarantee you that at some point something will probably come out about this guy you know, some kind of like creepy behavior. You don't you don't go this hard in the paint unless you're trying to distract people from your own skeletons. And they've all got them. They've all got them. And now one of them is on full display. They drove a man to suicide. And they're trying to backtrack and say that they didn't, but they absolutely did. And yeah. they should be forced to wear that scarlet letter the way that you know what I'm I, I, like. I, like I said, it's really hard for me because I believe in forgiveness. In this case, I I, I think that you need to make them play by their own rules. They need to wear this forever. And every time Via Lobos comes up for a job, the editor needs to be reminded, you know he caused a guy to kill himself, right? Same thing mm. with Alex DeCampi. Well, that that would be the same, because that's that's the same night letter they, that they use for a lot of creators now, right? Oh, mm. hey, you know this guy works for CG, or you know this guy t- went on uh, West Thinking Critical's channel, right? Just, to, just so you know. And it's like this concern trolling, that it's like, hey, just so you know, but no, you're right, Aaron. I mean, and to your point, let's look at this tweet right here from Greg Smallwood. He says, I'm done pretending that an apology or atonement gets you anywhere with these people. 
Tell me, Liam, did an apology change Warren Ellis's circumstances? How about Jason Latour's, Cameron Stewart, Brian Wood? There's no path, and you know it. Brian also boom. goes forward. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolute boom. Uh, Brian or Greg also comes forward and says, I've had some time to think about this, and my stance is this. I'm tired of the mean and nasty uh, holding of a monopoly on boldness. If you had a handle or a hand in the bullying of Ed Piscor and are unrepentant, like all of the all of the people we've shown tonight for the past two or three hours, I will not work with you or associate with you. And I will actively discourage others from doing so as well. I believe strongly in forgiveness. So I'm satisfied with a simple public apology. Not, I'm sorry that that happened, but I'm sorry I had a hand in it. This industry likes to hold people accountable, but we're never clear on terms or atonement. Those are my personal terms. Um, so Aaron, when you talk about people that are trying to hold other creators accountable and are going to start saying, hey, you know, you know, Villalobos drove a man to kill himself, right? You know, Alex DeCampi led a man to kill himself. I think that's what Greg is talking about here. Is that is that fair to say? That is absolutely fair to say. And I, I respect yeah. the hell out of Greg Smallwood for saying this, because you see that there's people in the industry that have a fair amount of influence like Mark Wade, who will be totally against this. You know, Mark Wade's yeah. out there, you know, patting Daryl Ayo on the back and like, you know, uh, feigning kinship with him so that he can, you know, promote his own uh, his own petty grievances and mm -hmm. uh, elevate himself and say like, oh, I've been the I've been the victim of attacks. You absolutely have, Mark. You know why? Because you earned them. You earned every single one of them. You go out there and you run your mouth and you act like an asshole. And then when you get pushed back, you're the victim because you're the hero of your own story. Well, you're not a hero, Mark. You're not. You could be. You know, I've worked with you. I know you. I know that there's some good in you, or at least there used to be. But you never give in to that. You give in to the worst parts of your nature all the time. Your petty, jealous, little hateful nature. That's what you give in to. You know, don't tell me your favorite character is Superman. Yeah, you can write Superman, but you're writing fiction because you have no idea. You're just making it up because you have none of that inside of yourself. At least, you know, none that you put on display. That's what's so interesting is that these individuals who... I'm shaking right now. <laughs> I, no, I believe it, man. I, I, you're, you are not alone. You are not alone, brother. When I was reading the, the letter, um, you know, in the first hour, it's, it's so angering. And I, and I think that was one of the things I first said when I, when I talked about it, I, I came out on Tuesday and I was like, listen, I am way too angry and I'm way too sad right now to even try to talk about this topic. And so I'm like, I'll give myself a week. I've given myself a week and I'm still, like you said, shaking when you read all this stuff. Right. Um, and it's amazing that these people are, like you said, writing superheroes. This is an industry that promotes comics that talk about the best of us being the best of us at all, trying to do so at all times possible. And now we're pro promoting degeneracy and victimhood and, and just absolute nonsense that has nothing to do with superheroes, right? Uh, the, the men who created the men who the tent poles of this industry, as Gail Simone would say, the men who created this industry would be fucking furious at what this industry has become right now. Um, so, oh, well, can, um, can we highlight David, David Gears comment real quick? The, yeah, sure. So he says there are people, uh, there are people need to find out what it's like to be on the other side of the rules that they make. If you don't like the rules, then don't make them. Uh, you could technically say Ed was one of these people that got the other side of that, you know, uh, and, 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 and Ed owns this in his letter. He said when he makes his comment about the tribe, this is what he's referring to. And this is also why I kind of support what Greg Smallwood is saying is if you're, if you're not going to show any remorse or you're not going to show any atonement at all for what you've said or done, then I don't want to work with you. And I'm going to encourage other people not to work with you. It's because you're probably not going to change. You have no reason to change. You're not showing any sign that you're going to change. And this could easily become one of these other people that are like, well, we support you until they don't, you know, and, and that's what you have to be careful with. It's, it sucks. I'm glad that I'm glad that we have friends and not allies that'll turn on us like her dog at a moment. You know, yeah. I'm glad that we 
hold each other accountable. We talk to each other, you know, like we're there for each other. Um, it's one of the things that I really love about the aficionados and, and the group that Wes has put together is that we really are all friends. Um, you know, I, I, I think that uh, sadly, um, and this, you know, maybe this is on Ed is he chose the tribe. He didn't choose friends. He didn't choose people who knew him, who cared to know him enough to say like, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm hearing this, but this doesn't seem like you. Can you explain it to me? And then yep. go out and then hear his explanation and then go out and defend him. You know, like he didn't have anybody like that. And that's what makes me really sad. Don't choose the mainstream comics tribe. Look, look, mm -hmm. it happens to, it happens to everybody. Look, I mean, we had, uh, we had uh, Rainy in the chat. What happened to her? All she did was decide, I'm going to go on Ethan's stream and I'm going to promote this book that I'm doing because mm -hmm. he's got a big audience and, and maybe people will like it. And what happened? Heather Antos came for her, tried to cancel yeah. her, tried to, mm -hmm. you know, get rally people against her. Um, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. And, and as much as we talk about these people, like, you know, we'll talk about Heather Antos and the things she says and the job that she does, but we're not trying to get her fired. We're not trying to like destroy her life. And Aaron, what, what happened to uh, women of color? in the industry being successful with their comic books, but no, no, no. The second Rini, who's a woman of color has an, a fucking kick ass comic book. Granted way better than any of the shit that Marvel and DC is coming out. And she's, you know, coming out with this, uh, you know, with fiendish right now, but all of the, the, the same people we talked about tonight all came after her and they were like, no, 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 we can't have you here. <laughs> like an actual talented woman. That's uh, that's actually creating like badass comic books. And, and why are the ringleaders for this, Max? Why are the ringleaders for this always the most mediocre white women? Oh, just, <laughs> it, no talent, no personality, just soulless, lifeless, succubi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just a, a succubus. Terrible. Succubuses. <laughs> yeah. uh, I apologize for laughing, but seriously, like uh, you, you have to, at some point, the ridiculousness of this hits you and you go like, I can't, I cannot, I cannot believe that we're in this situation. Um, uh, I think the last thing I was going to end on, if you guys want, um, I thought, you know, this was actually really interesting. Um, so your boy Zach had posted this and he said, Rob Liefeld went from kind of a punk know-it-all, con not conceited, confident, cocky, young dude in the comic book industry who was doing gene commercials. And he was like, he was the kind of the hot new thing in comics, right? To now a wise, considerate, um, professional, uh, older man. An elder statesman. And Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, I hate the whole... Rob Liefeld did the '90s shit, and oh, he's only done Deadpool, or oh, he can't draw feet. Those are like the worst. Wait, you know what? Numbers like, don't lie. Numbers don't lie. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say those are like brain dead, smooth brain. That those conversations hold no place when Rob drops videos like this. Uh, so I'm going to play this. It's a little emotional. So just to give you guys a heads up, um, Rob does get emotional here. But uh, we'll kind of end here. I think this is a good place to end is just kind of showing Rob's video because he has some really interesting things to say and um, or not necessarily interesting, but just like he, he's very articulate and he's very passionate and you can feel the emotion through the screen. And, and um, I really appreciated what he had to say. Ed was a talented, successful cartoonist. Uh, His biggest claim to fame was probably Hip Hop Family Tree, which was really cool. I got to know Ed because he expressed uh, that he had been uh, into my work when he was a kid. And he had a cool way about him. I really enjoyed Ed. I talked to him on and off for the last decade, and he had me on his show uh, he had a comic book show that he uh, that he hosted, and uh, Ed's gone. Ed took his life today, and the thing that I can't get over is he writes. He starts off, and he says he uh, he said he was sorry, but he says 
I don't know what happened with that piss score. I don't know what happened. Uh, he suddenly was in the eye of the storm, uh, a bunch of allegations and uh, seemed like there was a judgment that came as they often do before maybe everything could be vetted. But I'm going to say again, I don't know everything. What I know is Ed is gone. Ed took his own life. Uh, he's part of our comic book community. He went from hip hop family tree to making uh, X-Men comics for Marvel. And he loved comics. And I found him, I found his passion for comics to be sincere and uh, inspiring. Ed says, I was murdered by internet bullies. I was murdered by internet bullies. Massive amounts of them. Some of you out there absolutely contributed to my death as you entertained yourself with gossip about me. I wasn't AI. I was a real human being. You chipped little bits of my self-esteem away all week until I vaporized. He said, uh, he said, I hope it makes people think twice about joining in an internet feeding frenzy. Why am I here talking to you about Ed Piscor? We got to be better than this. Ed, it's, uh, I'm going to tell you what I tell my kids all the time. I'm so thankful that I didn't grow up with the internet and the bullying. I would have been mocked and made fun of. I am certain of it. And I, what, what kids go through nowadays, what adults go through, being dragged, being uh, just, as, as, as Ed said, vaporized. It's, uh, it's brutal. Ed's gone. Ed Piscor took his own life because he just, uh, what it comes down to, he, he, not many people can make it to the other side of, of the, of the, he said, I disappointed so many people. So I just think internet bullying is, uh, we've got to reevaluate this and we've got to take a different, we've got to really think twice. Uh, think about what it, I was murdered by internet bullies. He couldn't take it. It broke him. It broke him. And as a result, parents have lost a son. A sister has lost lost a brother. The industry lost a genuine talent. And uh, whatever mistakes he made, people make mistakes. People make mistakes. What we need to be better at is giving grace to people and not judgment, but giving grace. Maybe none of this makes sense, but I, I think... Uh, I am just shocked that Ed is gone and that he took his own life and uh, that I won't interact with him again. And uh, rest in peace, Ed. And I, I can only hope that there is some change to, to, to come of this. Well said. I like I like Rob a lot. I, I he's Rob's a good guy. Um, you know, in in my time being a, a comic book fan, um, I've both loved, then soured, then again loved Rob's work. Um, but I think that uh, Rob, as a human being, has um, has just become a really good guy. Um, mm. I see him every now at the every now and then at the show. Um, he comes down and shops, and uh, I always have you know I always have good conversations with him when when he's got the time to chat. Um, the fact that he he made this video, I think everything. I mean, there's there's nothing that he says that's wrong. Everything that he says in that video is absolutely correct. Yeah. And uh, and I think that that's a perfect way to kind of end this evening. Uh, I'm sorry, my mic was muted earlier, but uh, yeah, th this is kind of where this industry is at. Um, and I think it's going to take these individuals like like Rob and and hopefully some of us to to be able to hopefully change it. Um, you know, we have to be a light to the world. And um, unfortunately, sometimes that means calling out some of the evil in it. 
and so hopefully we did a little bit of we did a little bit, bit of both tonight. Hopefully we were able to be a light, but also call out some of the darkness. Um, so Rob, I think, puts it perfectly, and I, I really couldn't articulate my points any better than than how he did, honestly. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, Aaron, I forgot that, um, you had that really great story that you always tell us about the convention. Um, even though it was about like one of his comics and it was just like an absolute brawl, you know, I still love that story. And I think it's, I think it's funny. And I honestly, if you were to tell it to him today, I'm sure he'd be like, I remember you or like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. I hope, I hope not. I hope not. (laughs) Well, maybe, maybe if he didn't remember you, he'd at least be like, Oh, well at least we can laugh about it now, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, Stuff uh, like that. I, yeah. It's yeah, and it's, it's like, and, and but that's you know that's part of the reason that uh, that I, I really like Rob is I think that um, you know it's it's t- and and you know what you didn't realize like earlier in his career when he was like a little more brash and things like that it's like he's he's a young kid all of a sudden he's got oh, all yeah. this crazy success everybody in the business is blowing smoke up his ass and telling him he's the greatest thing since sliced bread you know mm-hmm. um, that that affects you um, but now here we are years later and like we said Rob's like an elder statesman of comics um, he's he's got wisdom now. Uh, he's, uh, he's coming out and he's saying things that need to be said. And, you know, Rob, um, to his credit, you know, he's, uh, he, he's, he's secured the bag as the kids say. So he doesn't have to worry about getting canceled. Um, yeah, I, I don't worry about getting canceled cause I, there's nothing, there's nothing in me that fears these people. Uh, and I refuse mm-hmm. to be scared of these people. And I think that, um, as much as it feels like, uh, you know, like we've had the discussion about like, oh, do I even want to be in this industry? It's disgusting. It's filled with, mm-hmm. you know, it's filled with garbage human beings. Um, it feels like swimming through raw sewage sometimes. I, yeah. I think that's all the more reason that we need to stay in because we love comics. We love the industry. We love the idea of a place that's merit-based. It doesn't matter what your your race is, what your sexuality is, what your religious beliefs are. You know, everybody's welcome as long as they have talent. That's the exclusivity meter is whether or not you can tell good stories and entertain people and treat the customers well that's always been like what we've been about and i think we need to extend that to you know like rob said having grace and uh, and treating other creators with uh you know with respect and with dignity and understanding that you know people may screw up um we need to give them benefit of the doubt and the there needs to be a way back you know we've we've said that repeatedly um so yeah i think that uh, it, it's upon all of us and uh, everybody in the chat that's a fan you know whether you're in the industry or you're just a fan of the industry um it's up to us to make these changes especially you that are uh, you that are younger because uh mm. you know you got more time to do it amen well said thank you gentlemen so much for for hopping in uh i i wanted to do this the first part of the stream just to kind of get the story rolling and then once we started getting into the aftermath i want to bring you guys on especially also as well because um we've talked about this now gosh for five streams five live streams, four live streams, you know, like videos. uh, um, It's been a lot. It's been a lot, but that's how impactful this is. Right. And so, um, like I said, guys, thank you for being here with me tonight and uh, spending the time because I I just kind of sent the link out to you randomly and was like, Hey, if you want to join in, please. Right. Come look at these tweets with me. So I'm not, I don't feel like I'm going insane. Um, But (laughs) yeah, it's been a pleasure to spend this evening with you guys talking about this. Uh, there's no one else I, w- I would rather talk about this with, honestly. Um, even though it is a tough subject, it means a lot. So thank you. And Warline, thank you. Uh, you were all well articulated in the stream, guys, and you did all you can do. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, Salty says this was an ex- exceptional show, Max. Gentlemen, thank you for your eloquence and understanding research and outstanding research and receipts. <laughs> receipts. Receipts. Uh, thank you, Salty. Uh, and I agree. Josh, Josh, he was here. He's, he's kind of our, he's, he's our moral support. And I, I apologize for, um, I apologize for any like over the top, uh, vitriol or, uh, you know, that's not, that's kind of like outside of my normal, uh, way of speaking but um i'm just so like just watching the stream and, and kind of like I, I at first i didn't want to come on i told max i said i think i've said all i can say on this and i don't want to go through <laughs> it again um and then i was watching the stream and i was just like getting furious yeah you're like i have more <laughs> so, to aaron, say aaron, now i have yeah, more to say aaron i'm as angry as you are but what you said said it's so much better than what i could about ramon mm-hmm. and i appreciate yeah. that yeah no truly man we we agree with your sentiments we understand your anger and and it is righteous 
It is absolutely righteous and um, it does not go, it does not fall upon deaf ears. Um, and I think everyone in the chat, everyone who listens to this, uh, all of, you know, your friends, uh, at least from what you said tonight about a lot of, uh, these individuals, um, I think it rings true to a lot of people. Um, and we're thankful that we have yourself who can articulate this a little bit better than some of us can. Um, because when I get angry, I just start throwing out F bombs. Right. Um, <laughs> and that's, you know, my Marine Corps comes out in me and the Marine Corps dude doesn't really make sense. He just starts like screaming. <laughs> you know, I've eaten too many crayons at this point to be <laughs> angry and articulate. I can't do both. Um, so yeah, we, we appreciate you have the good yeah. cop and bad cop. Aaron was the bad cop there. So <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And we, we, that's a good, it's a good balance on a stream, you know? So it's, I feel like um, I've been yelling. Me, I feel like I've just like, been yelling on streams lately. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, before you hopped on, I was, I was the one dropping the F bombs right and left, but I, I'm yeah, not a Marine yeah. and I reach a point where I'm like, look, some Fs are about to be flying. It can either be fists or fucks. You decide. <laughs> <laughs> fists or fucks. Hard R's are dropping, boys. Yeah, hard oh. R's are coming out. Yeah, it's, it's bad. you know, F bombs are bad, but then once the hard R's come out, it's over. It's over. So, um, all that being said, um, you know, RIP Ed Piscor, uh, this will be a moment in the industry. This will be a moment in history that we will not forget um, and that we will look back on and we will all look and, and try and see um, if there was something that we could have done to help prevent this or, or at least to ourselves better ourselves and to like Rob said, show grace. Um, and, uh, we, we hope to make this industry a little bit better, uh, with, with live streams like this. Uh, and, uh, so I'll, I'll kind of end saying hug your best friends, hug your loved ones, hug, hug, hug your family. Um, don't let the internet cancel you. You are better than that. You are bigger than that. You are stronger than that. And do not let the, evil, vitriolic, vile, and distasteful people of this internet culture try and cancel you because like I said, you are bigger than all of these people and all of that nonsense. Uh, so continue to be the light on, unto the world, which means that you reject modernity and embrace your legacy and show other people the greatness and the light that, uh, that you have seen. Um, thank you guys once again for being on the show with me tonight. Chat, you've been amazing as always. Lurkers, I can't see you but I still thank you as well. Uh, you guys are awesome. And we will see y'all potentially next weekend, but uh, we'll, we'll see because uh, there may be a big event happening in Vegas. Maybe there might be some sort of meetup or something. I don't know. Uh, so if we can make it back, maybe we'll show some of our pictures of having a good time. So, um, But yeah, with all that being said, love you guys. Thanks for being here tonight. And we'll see you guys uh, next week. Um, Take care and thank you all for, um, you know, being here tonight. We appreciate it.